Alright, I just barely did a tier list of all the guns in Edge of the Gungeon a few days ago. So now it's time for items. Uh, I don't even know what order these are in. Wow, what the hell? The other one was alphabetical. Well, yeah, we'll just go in the order this is. There's not as many items, I don't think, and there's a lot less to go over with the items, so hopefully this won't take as long. Yeah, let's do it. Alright, Meat Bun. Meat Bun is tough, because obviously... This is an active item that, when you eat it, you get double damage until you get hit. So this is like... It's better if you're good at not getting hit. But, I will say, Meat Bun makes it a lot easier to not get hit. Like, d having double damage makes it so much easier to not take damage. I don't think this is quite S tier, but it's definitely really good. Um, we'll just put that in A tier. Uh, it also heals you for a heart, which is... Nice, I guess. Doesn't hurt. Alright, Bottle. Bottle is... I like Bottle. This is an active item that, like, sadly doesn't get much, us much usage, but it's really good. Especially outside of Hero Shrine, where you're getting fewer ammo drops. You put um, room drops in this, so you can put, like, ammo, hearts... I don't know if you could put armor in it, I've never tried. But the main thing you want to be putting inside the bottle is ammo. Um... It just makes you use your ammo so much more efficiently. But the sad part is, unless you're, like, completely ammo-starved, and even if you are completely ammo-starved, you just want to be probably directly reloading your guns right when you get the ammo. This thing just gets, like, replaced really quickly a lot of the time. I'll put it in... Where does this belong? Also, I just noticed there's no F tier. Let's add... An F tier. I don't know if we'll need F tier. I don't know if there's any F tier item. No, there are F tier items, actually. Also, let's name these. So, we'll name these the same as before. You win. Very good. Solid. Useful. Meh. And useless. Bottle. Uh, we'll put Bottle in C tier, I think. I don't think it's quite good enough to be B tier, but it's definitely useful. Like, if you don't have an active item, this is a good thing to have. Alright, how about Bomb? Bomb? Bomb is either B tier or A tier. Bomb is insanely good, because it opens secret rooms. You can throw the bomb at a wall, a secret wall, and it'll open it, which is huge, because it saves you a lot of blanks. Plus... Bomb provides some really good utility in, like, boss fights, especially against Old King, because of uh, a concept I'll have to re-explain. I explained this in my gun tier list, but basically, in Enter the Gungeon, when you shoot an explosive, it will destroy bullets, right? But there's a cooldown on when the next explosion will destroy bullets. Like, if you're spamming a bunch of explosions, your first shot will destroy the enemy bullets, and then you have to wait, and then a shot later will destroy enemy bullets. And that's really strong with Bomb, because Bomb will basically um, always use that cooldown to great you, like, effectiveness, because you don't shoot the bomb very often. So whenever you shoot the bomb, it's gonna destroy bullets. Which is amazing for bosses like Old King, especially. Where he has that homing ring, you just throw the bomb at it, and then it just explodes. It's really nice. Uh, yeah, plus the utility of opening up secret rooms. Um, I'll probably put this in... I don't know. Because bomb is definitely a little bit hard to use. It probably blocks in B tier. This is a, definitely a solid active item. And I'm going to put Ice Bomb right next to it. So Ice Bomb doesn't have the ability to open secret rooms, sadly. But it makes up for it by being... A stronger combat option. So Ice Bomb has 
uh, longer cooldown than the bomb, so you're not going to be able to use it as often. But the ice bomb has a huge freeze radius, where if you throw the ice bomb in a room, everything's going to get frozen. So it's just a free room clear. So this definitely has less utility usage, but it makes up for that with stronger combat usage. So I, I would say these are right next to each other. Uh, proximity mine. I'll be honest, this is an active item that I haven't tried to use that much myself. Like, I haven't tried to make much use out of this thing. I'm gonna put it in D tier. I don't think it's useless. Like, if you have Proximity Mine and nothing else, it's worth using for sure. It's just very awkward to use, because you need to- you put it down at your feet. You don't throw it like a bomb. The bomb is really good because you throw it. You put this at your feet, and you need to- the, the target to, like, walk into it. Uh, so it can be okay against bosses that are, like, running into you constantly. But, I don't know. Usually you're going to want to use pretty much anything else besides this. Let's put that in D tier. How about Aged Bell? So here's our first A tier active item. So, before I talk about anything that's A or S tier, you got to understand Magnificence is a trade-off. Like, if you take a Magnificent item, which is an A or S tier item, you make it so you get much, you get fewer A or S tier items and guns for the rest of the run, including chests. So, if you're gonna take an ARS tier item or gun, it needs to be worth it, effectively. Which makes it so, if something is A tier or S tier and it's bad, I'm gonna put it lower on the tier list versus if it was like, I'm taking that into consideration here. And H Bell is pretty good, honestly. Like, if you need an active item, this is pretty worth it because this is a good, uh, this is a good boss clear. Like, it's pretty much just your average invincibility active item. It just frees all enemies and stuff. And it lets you steal, so it has that utility to it as well. So this is one of the better active items for sure. Definitely goes in A tier. How about Airstrike? Airstrike? Uh, where do we want Airstrike to go? Airstrike is super good. This is an uh, insanely high damage act item. And it has a huge radius, just the super long line of a ton of explosions. So this is like a really nice DPS act item. The problem is, if you want to take advantage of the explosion destroying enemy bullets, like the bomb, you need to make sure the first explosion from the airstrike is the one that's hitting those bullets, so it's kind of awkward to use in that sense. I don't know if this goes in A tier or B tier. This probably goes in A tier. This is... I love Airstrike. This is a super nice active item. Alright, Alpha Bullet. Here's another... Here's our first A tier passive. Our first passive period, I guess. Wow. I don't know what this list is. This order is very strange. Um, Alpha Bullet's okay. It's definitely a lot better than Omega Bullet because you're going to be shooting your first shot a lot more often than your last shot. Um, and it just has more flexibility. But being A tier is kind of rough. I don't know if this goes A or B tier. Like, I'll usually take Alpha Bullet if I see it, especially because this is one of the things you really want with, like, Glass Cannon. Any, anything that's really strong with Glass Cannon, which is like anything in the game, is really nice. But another nice thing about Alpha Bullet is it's not going to make your other guns worse. Like Platinum Bullets, for example. I don't know where Platinum Bullets are, but Platinum Bullets are going to make a lot of your guns worse. Unless you're really being careful to not max out your fire rate. Just because of damage cap. But this doesn't really have that issue. Um, we'll throw this in A tier. It's pretty good. All right, how about utility belts? Or sorry, not utility belt, ammo belt. This thing is really nice. I mean, it's D tier, so it's really cheap in the shop, and it's what ten percent more ammo on all your guns. It's super nice. Like, if you have a lot of money, there's no reason not to buy this. And if you're playing Hero Shrine, which I typically do. Uh, you pretty much always buy this whenever you see it, because it's so cheap. 
Uh, it doesn't have any crazy synergies or anything. Uh, I... I want to say this has a commando synergy, but I can't remember. That commando synergy is, like, no good anyway. Uh, I'll put it in C tier. Like, it's not going to change your run completely or anything, but it's really nice to have if you actually have extra money. But ammo synth, on the other hand, will change your entire run. This thing is crazy. This is definitely A tier. Um, ammo synth is just so nice, especially if you're using a really ammo efficient gun, like Sunlight Javelin or like Mega Hand, for example. Anything like that that shoots slow and is like one or two shotting most enemies, you're never going to run out of ammo, like ever, with this thing. Plus, it helps keep your ammo counts of other stuff high as well. Like, if you have something that, like a pistol or something, with 300 rounds or so, it's going to really help keep that ammo count up. It is better in non-hero shrine because you're, lo you're using less ammo on average per enemy, and you're getting less ammo fewer ammo drops in general, so it's more effective. Like, more impactful. Yeah, ammo synth is super nice. Alright. How about Amulet of the Pit Lord? Amulet of the Pit Lord is a weird one, because its ability isn't that great. Like, it can save you... It can save you a couple damage... per run. If you're not, like, if you're falling in pits quite a bit. But this thing has nice synergies. It synergizes with, like, every colored guanstone. Which, the guanstone synergies are pretty meh overall, but a couple of them are really good. Like, oranger guanstone is really good. Bluer guanstone is insane. That synergy is ridiculously good. Uh, redder is kind of meh. Greener does, like, nothing. Um... I'll put this in C tier. Like, again, this isn't going to, like, completely change your run, but it's nice to have, and it's really cheap to buy. So, a lot of these D tier passives that are cheap and nice, you just buy them if you have extra money, if you see them in the shop, and if you see them from, like, a chest, you obviously pick them up. And typically, you'll be seeing these from chests more often, because D tier chests are very good. All right. Uh, I mean, obviously, Ancient Hero Bandana is S tier. This just makes, it quadruples how much ammo all your guns have. So, <laughs> like, you're never gonna run out of ammo on any of your guns ever, so. I, I, this item is really boring. I don't love it, but it's so good. Like, there's no situation where this isn't good. So, <clears throat> pretty obvious S tier there. Alright, uh, these are Angry Bolts, right? It's been a while since I've played, so I don't want to mix up. Yeah, here's homing, so... Angry Bullets. Dude, I don't know how to feel about Angry Bullets. Angry Bullets, that's rough. Because they're so unreliable. Like, they do almost nothing, but they don't hurt. I would almost never buy them or anything, but... I don't know. I'll put this in... Let's go B or C. I'm feeling C. I don't like Angry Bullets that much. Like, they just don't... They don't do, like, anything. <laughs> I don't know. Alright. How about Antibody? Antibody... Uh, Antibody is F tier if you're playing, like, Robot or you're stacking armor. The way you win and enter the Gungeon consistently, once you become very good, is you just stack as much armor as possible. Like, armor is all that matters. So, all antibody does is, if you're stacking armor, is make it so you can heal back up quicker after using uh, the vampire. Or just, if there's health on the ground, you can get more money from the vampire. But, like, it doesn't do that much. This does have a really good synergy with, like, Dark Marker, but I don't know. Dark Marker is just so... I, that synergy is not good enough to put the bump this up. I'm gonna put this in D. Well, like it's D tier or F tier, probably D tier for me. But for a less experienced player, you're really happy to see this. I'll put it in C tier because of that. It's definitely useful. All right, how about Armor of Thorns? Armor of Thorns is rough. So what this does is it makes you take no com. 
uh, contact damage. It makes your dodge rolls deal more damage. I believe there's one that like multiplies your damage and there's one that adds damage. I can't remember which is which, but this just, it makes your dodge roll do more damage and it gives you one armor when you pick it up, which is nice. Um, I'm gonna put a D tier. I mean, I'm always happy to see the armor, but like this isn't gonna do anything for your run really, because you don't want to be dealing damage with your dodge rolls typically. And the contact damage, I usually drop this in the late game, because I don't like, I don't like having the contact damage removed in the late game. Because if you're trying to use the partially eaten cheese for room clear, it just makes you bounce off enemies, which is super annoying. Yeah, it, I mean it's effectively just an armor drop at the end of the day, so which is good, but it's just one armor. Like you wouldn't really buy this usually if you see it in the shop so we'll put it in d tier armor synth easy s tier this is one of the best items in the game this is especially one of the best a tier items in the game armor synth is insanely good insanely good this makes you get so much armor and like i said stacking armor is how you win like just making it so you have that gigantic buffer um and like, no matter your skill level, this thing's going to be insane. Because even if you're not stacking armor, getting an armor every once in a while, just to lose immediately, helps. Technically. Yeah. Easy S tier right there. Alright, Baby Good Mimic. Uh, this one's rough, because what Baby Good Mimic does is... It's a fairly strong familiar in its base form. It does a lot of damage. And especially if you have it run into enemies, it does so much damage. And it's projectiles. If it gets shot, it shoots these projectiles like randomly around it. They do a decent amount of damage. Um, plus, you can usually buy this for like one key from the key merchant, which is one key for this guy is pretty okay, especially if you have extra keys. I don't think familiars are all that great, so like having this guy copy a familiar isn't going to help you that much. I'll put it in C tier. Generally, I don't like familiars too much in this game because it makes it harder for you to control your damage cap. Like, if your DPS sucks, like, if you're worse at min-maxing in general, your DPS on average is going to be worse. So, that means familiars are always going to be helping your boss DPS overall because you're not going to be hitting the damage cap. So, I will say, the worse at min-maxing you are, the better familiars become. And yeah, baby sh good Shelaton, this thing is D tier, if not F tier. I'm not going to put it in F tier because it does something, but this thing, this is like one of the worst familiars. This is probably the second worst familiar. This thing sucks. Why is this S tier? It does nothing, man. Like, you're giving up your magnificence for this. It's not worth it. He's cute and all, but really bad item. <laughs> Whenever I see this from a chest or anything, I don't even pick it up. It's not worth it. Backpack, though. Backpack? Backpack is A tier, definitely. This is this is a D tier item, isn't it? A D tier item that gives you an extra active slot is so good, man. Plus, this has decent synergies. Um, as far as I remember. I don't have the wiki pulled up or anything, but... I remember having this some this having some okay synergies. I believe it has... Isn't this the one with the jetpack synergy? I could be wrong about that, but... Uh, that jetpack synergy is nice. Yeah, I mean, just D tier item gives you an extra active slot. You almost never want, don't want to buy this. Easy A tier. Alright, backup gun. Uh, backup gun is tough, because... This plays into the damage cap problem if you're using something like that bounces around. Like sling or like railgun, that kind of thing. I like backup gun overall. If you have a, an insane combo, it's just like bouncy bullets, backup gun, glass cannon. That's like, that'll make your boss clear so crazy. But I don't know. Pretty much any insane boss damage is going to be really good with uh, glass cannons. So that's not really special. 
It makes room clear kind of cool, but usually there's not going to be any enemies behind you. Like, you don't want to be putting yourself, slotting yourself between enemies, front of you and back of you. Because that's a good way to get hit. So, during room clear, you're almost never going to be getting value out of this thing unless your bullets bounce. But, it helps. Uh, does this go B tier or C tier? Man, that's tough. A lot of these items are going to be hard to, hard to rate, just because usually they'll do nothing, but sometimes they'll be amazing. I'll put it in C tier. It's definitely useful. I'm never not happy to see this. I always pick it up, but if it's in the shop, it's hard to justify buying it. Alright, badge. Badge is D tier, if not F tier. The, like, cop is so bad. <laughs> so this is an A tier item. And you get this familiar that like walks around and shoots stuff, and then if he takes too much damage, he dies. And when you co when you talk to the cop after he dies, you get curse and you get a damage upgrade. Um, so automatically he's useless if you're playing Hero Shrine, pretty much, because that damage up's not worth spawning Lord of the Jammed. If you're not playing Hero Shrine, it's okay, but losing your magnificence for this. But that little damage up is just so meh. Like, if you're late in the run, it doesn't matter because your Magnificence is gone by then, but... I don't know. The one... Okay, the one good thing about Cop... There's a strange bug in this game with Familiars where... Sometimes they'll... They'll, like, get too many damage multipliers or something. Like, damage multipliers will stack too much. And... They'll, like, one-shot bosses. Cop is one of those familiars that'll do it the most often. The two familiars that do it the most often, from what I've seen, are Cop and Phoenix. I assume because they have, like, high base damage compared to other familiars. But if you have, like, Snow Bullets or Silver Bullets against a Jammed boss and a couple other boss or damage ups and stuff, these guys will, like, one-shot bosses. I don't know what causes it, really. It's just... It seems like it's multipliers doing too much for some reason. That's the one good thing about Cop, is if you have Silver Bullets with High Curse, or Snow Bullets and a bunch of other damage ups. This can, like, one-shot bosses, which is pretty funny. But other than that, like, this is almost never worth it. Alright. Ballistic Boots? I'm putting Ballistic Boots A tier. Move speed is so good in this game, especially if you're playing non-Turbo. Because the way Turbo works is... Turbo gives you way more move speed then it speeds up the game. So it makes repositioning during boss fights much easier. Turbo actually makes the game easier overall, in my opinion, because it's so much easier to stay in a good position, where if you're in a good position all the time, you almost never have to react super quickly to enemy bullets because you're just, you're just in a good position constantly. So I will say these are definitely worse if you're playing Turbo. Like, move speed in general is just going to be less impactful because you already have so much of it compared to how much this game was sped up. But in in non turbo, this these are just amazing. Any move speed increase is just gonna be super high up. All right, ballot. Ballot is pretty nice. Like I'm never sad to see ballot. I believe is this a B or C tier item? I think it's B tier. Um, so it's gonna be pretty expensive in normal shops. Um, I think it gives three coolness, but. You the really good thing about Ballot is you can buy it from the key merchant for one key. This is a solid item. I really like Ballot. I mean, this for one key is usually worth it. Unless you desperately need to save your key. I'd say Ballot is pretty solid. Alright. Uh, this item. I can't remember what this is called. <laughs> the Robot Starter item. This is A tier. This is one of the best accuracy upgrades in the game. And accuracy makes so many guns that are, like, hard to use amazing. Like, Budget Revolver, Hegemony Rifle come to mind. Like, if you get this with Hegemony Rifle, it's instantly your best room clear, boss clear, probably. Especially room clear. Like, and any shotgun becomes so much better with this, and shotguns are already very good. But accuracy is just so impactful, depending on your build. Yeah, definitely an A tier there. I believe this is a D tier item as well, so you're going to be seeing this from Brown Chess, which is very good. Alright. Battle standard. Uh, Alright. So... 
this kind of forces me to talk about familiars again. I mentioned before, familiars are not that good if you're good at min-maxing because... Um, they're just contributing to your damage cap, and if you're already staying close to damage cap because you're min-maxing properly, familiars are just hurting your damage overall because you don't want to be going over the damage cap. That makes you do less damage. And battle standard is really, really good if you have familiars and you're doing, like, no damage, but it's really bad if you're doing good damage and you have some familiars. Like, it's not, it's not worth taking this. Another thing with battle standard is it actually makes familiars more common. It adds weighting to... I don't I don't know if it's every familiar. I had a list of the familiars it adds weight to. Um, so, I mean, sometimes getting familiars more often can be nice. Like, especially if you get this in the early game, it can be okay. Just because it'll make your familiars do a bunch of damage. That'll help your damage cap, or help you get closer to damage cap, but... I'll put this in C tier. Like, it's it's situational how good this is. And it definitely depends on how good you are at mid-maxing. Alright. Big boy. This is my favorite active item, probably. It's e it's between big boy, spice, and uh lament. But compare I'll never take lament in Hero Shrine runs almost. I'll usually eat spice, but big boy, I always take big boy if I see it. If, even if I have to buy it. Big Boy is so good. And I'm actually going to move Racket Key up a little bit. I want to talk about Racket Key right after Big Boy. Come on. We'll talk about Racket Key right after, because these are very similar. But Big Boy is amazing. It's a B-tier active item, which is great. It's great to be in B-tier, because you don't get Magnificence from it. Uh, it gives Curse when you pick it up, or while, when you're holding it. And what it does is... When you use it, it summons this giant, like, airstrike targeting red box. And if you use it, it transforms everything in the room into those, like, I forget what they're called. Those mutated bulletkin from the oubliette. It transforms them into that. And then, immediately after, it does huge damage to everything in, like, a medium radius around it. It's not room-wide, the damage. Like, the transformation. But it's, it's a pretty big radius. And the damage from that does enough to always one-shot those guys. Even if they're jammed, I believe. I don't... I don't remember ever seeing a jammed one of those guys survive the big boy. And the details of how it works, they're very important. Because you use the big boy, and then it starts cooling down. And then it transforms everything and deals damage. So it's a one-shot, effectively, on everything in the room. And it cools itself down by a ton. Like, if you use this in a room with a ton of enemies, it's gonna pretty much be instantly cooled down. Especially if you have coolness. You're just gonna immediately be able to use it again. Which is incredible. Plus, it's an explosion, so you can use it just like Bomb, like I said. Where you're against Old King or whatever, it's even better against other bosses because... The radius of the explosion, explosion is so huge. You can use it to just effectively blank. It's effectively a blank because of how big the explosion is. Which is amazing. Like, everything about Big Boy is so good. Which is why I want to talk about Bracket Key. Bracket Key is similar to Big Boy, except in all the good ways. Everything good about Big Boy is missing from Bracket Key. Bracket Key is like... I don't know if it's B tier or C tier. Bracket Key is not good. <laughs> not that good. So, first off, Bracket Key is an S tier active item. So, immediately, the tiering is worse. You're giving up your Magnificence to have this thing. Uh, I believe it also gives Curse. I can't remember. I never use Bracket Key. And you'll see why after I talk about it. Um, it doesn't have an explosion. So you can't use it as that utility against bosses and such to as an effective blank. Um, it doesn't want it doesn't transform and then da damage enemies. It just deals damage. So a lot of the time against big enemies, it, this thing is just going to do almost nothing. Um, the biggest thing people like about Bracket Key, I believe, is the fact that it makes later waves in a room just not spawn. If you use it right when you enter a room that would have later waves, the waves just don't spawn. 
and this is like debatably the biggest upside and the biggest downside of this item because the upside is you don't have to fight those enemies which is great but the downside is you get so much less money by using this thing which is a big problem like if you're in the late game and you don't really need money it doesn't matter like using this in hell is fine but if you're trying to use this in the early game and you're constantly spamming it you're losing out on so much economy just by trying to utilize this item which is so sad like you trade easier rooms for less money which hurts so much especially if you're playing hero shrine you lose so much money or you have higher curse that's why i'm probably gonna put this in c tier this i feel like bracket key is just 90 percent of the time not worth it unless i'm like in hell and i just want to get to lich faster like bracket key is just so meh it is worth mentioning i believe this is part of the key merchant pool i can't remember how many keys it costs it's like two or three uh i i never buy this thing i never use this thing pretty meh item i'll leave it in c tier it's not quite meh tier but yeah i feel like this is an overrated one all right bionic leg though oh my god this could go s tier but i think it's a tier well is this s tier it's so good yeah this is s tier bionic leg is insane dude what the hell is this item all right let me talk about this this is another one that's gonna take a lot of talking about Bionic Leg? Oh my god, what the hell is this item? Okay, it gives a lot of move speed. I believe it... Doesn't it give the same move speed as uh, Ballistic Boots? Which is already amazing. We talked about why move speed is good. Just gives you that uh, uh, ability to reposition. It gives you one armor when you pick it up, which is great. Ah, uh, just like Armor of Thorns. You love having that armor. Uh, I believe this is a... Is this a C or B tier item? I don't remember. Usually you want to buy this when you see it in the shop. Uh, it's not going to give you any magnificence. It is C tier, yeah. So it's going to be really inexpensive if you see it in the shop. So this is almost always worth buying. And that's just its its own passives alone. When Advanced Gungeons and Dragons came out, it added synergies to the game. And this is the best... This is the big reason why this item is S tier. This is like the best synergy item in the entire game. Look at the wiki and look at the synergies this thing gives. All of them are incredible besides like the Robocop one, where it makes your cop invincible. And even Robocop is like pretty fine. That's definitely the weakest one, but it, it gives you like that really strong Polaris synergy. It gives you pistol machine. It, I, doesn't it give you the siren synergy that makes you look inside chests? I would have to look at the list again. Like. This gives you some of the best, most common synergies in the game, all in one item. You almost never don't want to buy this thing if you see it in the shop. And whenever I see this, it's just... It's game over already, because I know I'm going to get some crazy synergies. Especially if I have a uh, low synergy, or maximum synergy factor. Pretty much, if you don't know, in Enter the Gungeon, there's different weightings on all items, depending on, like... A bunch of different stuff like magnificence changes the weighting on s and a tier items and one of the important weightings you need to know is synergy factor the fewer synergies you have picked up in a run um the more likely you are to see synergies from what you have there's weighting on items that items and guns that synergize with your current build which is a big reason why this is so good you become way more likely, especially if you have no synergies, to get like Pistol Machine or Polaris, or sorry, Machine Pistol or Polaris, stuff like that, when you have Bionic Luck. It's so good. This is definitely an S tier item. You're probably just gonna get an insane synergy and instantly win if you get this thing. All right. How about Blank Bullets? I don't know, I don't like Blank bullets, not bullets that much, but I feel like they're probably S tier. I mean, they're so good. It's just, you shoot blanks every once in a while. They can open walls. They're good against bosses. It does increase your damage a little bit, which is nice, because blanks do damage. And it synergizes with the amulets pretty well. Blank bullets become really annoying if you have chaos amulet or frost amulet, because you're going to be, like, freezing stuff before it spawns, and you have to wait longer for it to spawn. But that's just kind of, like, an inconvenience more than anything. 
This does give curse, unfortunately, so it's a little bit less useful in like Hero Shrine. But I feel like in Hero Shrine it's still worth it. Because the blanks are so powerful. Like, yeah, this is a boring one. I don't like blank bolts that much, but it's hard to say you're not gonna win if you have this. It's so strong. Alright. What the hell is this item? The dude. Oh my god. Blank companion ring is so bad. It's so bad. The kind of build you need for this thing to do anything is so insanely niche. And this is an A tier item. Let's get that out of the way first. That's a big reason why it's so low. This is an A tier item. When you use an active item, the blank buddy will trigger a blank. And the blank buddy's blanks have a pretty long cooldown. Like, you. If you're trying to spam out blanks with, like, um, the robot, the iBomb companion app, that's what it's called. If you're trying to spam out blanks with iBomb companion app, they come out pretty slow. Like, you can't just spam them out like crazy. You can get a decent amount of them, but, like, it, this is just a worse Elder Blank <laughs> that's A tier. Because you need an active item that you can use it with, and... The amount of active items that you can use this completely to its full potential with, the list is so short. Like, Bomb you kind of can because it has low cooldown. I Bomb Companion App, of course you can. Um, Melted Rock you can. I don't know. This thing is, for what it does, it's way too niche, especially because it's A tier. Like, you're actively nerfing your potential build by picking this up. If you get Golden Amulet, this thing kind of becomes crazy because... You can just one-shot rooms. Like, probably every other room you'll be able to just walk in and one-shot. Depending on how fast you're going. Sometimes every room, sometimes every other room. Depends. Which is really nice. But yeah, without, like, Golden Amulet, this thing is so not worth it. Um, Definitely D tier. Alright. Oh, Blast Helmet. I'll put Blast Helmet in B tier. So Blast Helmet's abilities, it gives you contact immunity. It makes your dodge rolls do more damage. I believe this is the multiplier and this was the flat damage up. I think that's how it is. This multiplies and then this gives a flat damage up, I think, to your dodge rolls. Not that it matters. You really shouldn't be using dodge rolls to kill anything. Um, unless you're playing the bullet and you have both of these, then it becomes kind of crazy. But <laughs> anyway. Um, and it makes explosions radius, it makes an explosions radius, uh, damaging radius be smaller for you. So if something that blows up right next to you, it'll have to be way closer to you to damage you. Um, it's from brown chest, which is great. The really good thing about, the two really good things about blast helmet are... It's from Brown Chess, and it gives Nailed It, which I'm biased, all right? Nailed It, I love Nailed It. That synergy's so good. Whenever I see Blast Helmet, I buy it, just especially if I have no synergies. I have my maximum synergy factor. Uh, I always buy this, because it makes me more likely to get Nailed Gun and get Nailed It. The, I will say, this could... There could be an argument to put this in C tier, but I'm so biased, I'm just putting it in B tier. I love this thing. If this were like a C tier item, I would definitely put it down here, but it's so cheap. Uh, the one problem with Nail Gun is it's in the shitty class of guns. So it's pretty rare that you're gonna see it, sadly, compared to other guns, just because the shitty class, I'm not saying it's a shitty gun, I'm saying it's in the shitty class of guns. Um, the shitty class of guns, when you pick up other shitty guns, they the waiting for other shitty guns goes down a ton. Like, you're way less likely to get them. And a lot of the starting guns are shitty, so you're immediately having that lower chance to get shitty guns. Uh, straight from the get-go. So it's kind of hard to ne get nail gun, even with synergy factor, because of that unfortunate side effect of nail gun being in the shitty class. But I still like this thing. I don't know. I'm biased. This probably goes in C tier, but I'm putting it in B. I don't care. It's my list. All right, how about Blood Brooch? Ah, Blood Brooch. This is a tough one, because this has the same issue as, like, Antibody. It's way better than Antibody. Like, it's way more potent. It's going to do a lot more healing for you. If you're struggling to stay, stay alive and you get Blood Brooch, this will save your run. Like, 
probably goes in SRA tier at that point. But if you don't need the health, all this does is just like give you curse and lower your magnificence for no reason. I'll put it in B tier. Just because of how strong it is if you need the health. But yeah, if you don't need the health, this thing... This thing is so bad, but if you need the health, it's so amazing. We'll just go for a nice B tier. Just kind of right in the middle. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bloodied Scarf. Oh man. This is S tier. Come on. Oh my. Okay, this is a controversial one, I'll admit. This thing is so good. If you get this, you just win if you know how to use it. Come on. It changes your dodge roll into a teleport, which is like, that's, and it makes you reload faster, which is kind of nice. But Bloody Scarf is just, it's so amazing. So a lot of people don't like it because they're not used to replacing their dodge roll with a teleport. The teleport kind of goes further. And if you try to teleport into a wall, instead of teleporting, it, nothing will happen and you'll just get hit. So you need to be careful to not teleport into walls. And you kind of need to get used to the distance of the dodge roll. Except not really. Because if you just spam dodge roll with this thing, if you're just spamming that dodge roll button, you're teleporting all over the place. And when you teleport on top of a bullet, the bullet vanishes. It has a radius around yourself where you teleport on top of bullets and they just disappear. So you can just spam teleports. If, some, if there's bullets, you just... You literally just spam the button as fast as you can. And you just never get hit. It's literally invincibility. And in the, I have a Twitch, I have Twitch chat open here. The chat is saying it's good on computer, but not on console. On console, it sucks. Not really. <laughs> I play on controller myself, and this thing is incredible. You don't need to be able to choose where you're teleporting from far away because you just spam dodge roll. You're invincible. You're literally invincible if you're spamming dodge roll, as long as you don't teleport on top of an enemy. It's so good. Okay, and you get the fast reload speed, which is nice. And here's another perk of this item. So if you hold down dodge roll, you can choose where you teleport, which if you're playing on keyboard mouse, you can just choose with your cursor. But if you're playing on controller, you have to like move your aim and you, you have a ghost on your cursor or like where you're aiming. You have to move the ghost inside of a wall and if you tell if you move your ghost inside of a secret wall and teleport in the wall, you can go into secret rooms completely for free. You don't need to blank the secret room. You can loot everything inside. You won't be able to see anything cuz it technically it doesn't open up so you can't see, but you can look at the map to see if there's anything inside. So you kind of need to be careful of mimics and stuff. Um but this lets you access the rat without using any blanks. You just teleport inside both walls and then just open the hatch and you just fall down. That's definitely an underrated aspect of it. Is it effectively, it's better than bomb. It has bomb's ability effectively where you can just get in secrets for free. This thing is incredible. It's just effective inf invincibility if you're spamming roll, even on controller. Um, faster reload speed and free secrets. This thing is crazy. Easiest here. All right, how about bloody nine millimeter? I I don't like this item. I think it's good. I definitely am gonna put it in B tier just uh, as a starter. But I don't know. Uh, maybe it goes A tier actually. Like it's pretty good. I don't like it personally, but whenever you shoot a uh, bullet, you have a chance of rocking the bloody nine millimeter and it just like bounces around and it does a bunch of damage it's pretty good room clear it's fine for bosses like it's not gonna ruin your damage cap usually um i don't know i mean this item is just kind of like inconsequential i guess like i would say solid is the best way to describe it like it's not gonna do a whole lot for your build but it, it doesn't hurt to have it it usually helps one thing you need to be careful of with this item is you usually want to drop it if you're shooting a chest, especially in a chest room, because if you shoot a chest with this item and then the bloody nine millimeter procs, that shot is going to bounce around and destroy the chest because the chest room is so small. 
So, if you don't drop this thing before you shoot a chest in a chest room, you're risking destroying the chest every single time, which is kind of annoying. Um, that's probably... That's probably the reason why I don't like it the most, now that I think about it. Like, I don't know why I don't like this item. Besides that, like, it's pretty solid. You just need to be careful to drop it before you shoot any chests. Yeah, it's fine. Um... How about Bloody Eye? Ugh, Bloody Eye. I don't like Bloody Eye. But that's mostly because of how experienced I am with the regular bullet speed. Like, slowing down the bullet speed, I, I'm sure this applies to a lot of other people as well, but it gets worse the longer you play. Like, you just get so used to the regular bullet speed that sometimes it'll mess up your dodge roll timing and stuff like that. But... It's definitely effective. I don't know if this goes B tier or C tier. Like, slowing down bullets is really good. Is this for high level or in general? I try to balance. I try to balance a little bit. Like, Blood Breach, for example. This sucks at high level, but it's really good at low level, so I put it in B tier, kind of as a compromise. But, I don't know. Like, ah. <sighs> This thing is just kind of awkward to use if you're so used to the bullet speed, but having slower bullets is always a good thing. Um, I'll put it in... God, I don't like this item, dude. I'll put it in... C Bloody Eye. I was about to put this in C tier, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's nice. Slower bullets are usually good, but sometimes it'll mess up your dodge roll. Pers I mean, this is a very biased... I, I don't like this item. It probably belongs in B tier, but yeah. I don't prefer it. Really don't like that item. Alright, Blue Guan Stone. This one is really good. This is one of the better Guanstones. So, one thing I like to say about Guanstones is... They're not that good at blocking bullets, in general. Like, they don't cover that much area. And even if you have a lot of them, there's so many gaps. Unless you have, like, literally a ton of them. And even if you have a ton of them, stuff can shoot inside the gap, if you're too close, and still hit you. Um, so... Unless you have, like, a bajillion glass wand stones, they're not going to do a whole lot. Except for this one. This one rotates a lot faster than other guan stones, which is really nice. Like, this one is actually decent at blocking shots, I'll say. And this has one of the best uh, guan synergies with, like, Amulet of the Pit Lord and stuff like that. And plus one bullets. Um, bluer guan stone, where... The Guanstone gets bigger, starts rotating faster, and every bullet it destroys, it deals damage in a radius around... I, I don't think it's room-wide. Uh, sorry. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't know, I can't remember if the damage is room-wide room or not. The wiki might say. And it's not a ton of damage. But it really adds up. It's super nice. This is one of the better Guan Stones. I don't know if it's quite good enough to put A tier. Like, it's not super necessary. And, man, is this a B tier Guan Stone? Like, I usually feel like it's not... It's so ex it's expensive enough that I usually don't want to buy it. So it might be B tier in, in the game. I'm going to put it in solid. I don't think it's good enough to be A tier, but... This is definitely one of the better Guan Stones. Alright. Wow. Here's a big one. Book of Chest Anatomy. So this makes it so when you destroy a chest, you get better drops on average from destroying the chest. This can give you like keys a good amount of the time. Sometimes it'll just straight up give you the contents of the chest, I believe. Like it'll just give you like, you'll break a B tier chest and it'll just give you a B tier gun, that kind of thing. I don't know if that's actually giving you the contents, but it gives you some really good stuff. <laughs> um, this makes junking chests like more worth it and 
I'm not going to say you should be going out of your way to junk chests when you have this thing, but the, probably the best thing about this is you can buy it from the key merchant for one key. This is almost always worth buying from the key merchant. One key for this thing is ridiculously good. You're almost always going to get value out of that. Especially if you have a low amount of keys. If you have one key and you have to choose between opening a chest and buying this, you should buy this. It's so good. Plus, this thing has good synergies. It synergizes with lowercase r. That's probably the best synergy. That's one of the best synergies in the game. Uh, if you have lowercase r with this, it makes it so lowercase r just opens the chests. Just straight up. Uh, as long as you don't... For some reason, lowercase r is kind of bugged with its like first shot from each... Or first few rounds from each clip. So, how you want to... Uh, just pro tip here. How you want to use this synergy with lowercase r is you shoot one burst at the wall and then you shoot the second burst at the chest to make sure it doesn't break because that first burst will not open the chest it'll just like almost break it so yeah shoot the first burst at the wall second burst to the chest a little bit of bug there uh i don't know if this is quite good enough to be s tier but it's incredibly good you almost always want this thing all right boomerang i love boomerang this is a really good acto item so it has really short cooldown, and when you when you throw it, it'll just bounce around and hit most things in the room. Pretty much everything in the room, it'll hit, and it'll stun for a good amount of time. Uh, sorry, we'll skip that one really quick. <laughs> I don't want to be talking over the lyrics. Um, I don't know if this is quite good enough to be A tier, because a lot of the time, I feel like I get rid of this for other active items, but... This really is viable into the late game for room clear. It just has no use in boss clear. Because bosses typically don't have, like, enemies. Additional enemies like Isaac would and stuff like that. So this is just like a tiny bit of extra damage, I guess. We'll put it in B tier. This is definitely one of the better active items. Especially because of its cooldown. Its cooldown is so low you can use it multiple times in a room typically. All right, Bouncy Bullets. Bouncy Bullets are really good. I'll put Bouncy Bullets A tier. I think they're good enough to be A tier. These are nice. Um, Just because they're good in room clear, and they're pretty decent in boss clear. I mean, your shots are going to be hitting more often, which sometimes is a bad thing if you have a lot of damage. But I feel like these are usually a good thing rather than a bad thing. And... I like, okay, uh, with a lot of these bullet um, modifiers, I'm going to be talking about Glass Cannon, because Glass Cannon is like the golden standard um, gun that you want if you have a lot of bullet modifiers. Because if you have a ton of bullet modifiers, most of your guns are just going to be damage capping against bosses, doing nothing. But Glass Cannon becomes amazing. Sorry. Okay. Like, this... You just shoot this at the boss, and it bounces back and hits the boss twice. I think the, sh the second shot does less damage, because it technically pierced the boss. But it still adds up huge. Like, I... I like Bouncy Bullets, for real. Um, they're definitely worse against bosses if you have a lot of damage. Or, this is definitely not great against bosses if you have a lot of damage, and you don't have Glass Cannon, though. But I feel like this is typically a good thing. All right, box. <clears throat> box kind of sucks. I think this goes in meh. Why is this A tier, man? I don't know why the box is A tier. Literally, all it does is allow you to steal. And, like, hide yourself from enemies, which is just not that good. <laughs> I mean, the ability to steal is nice. The ability to steal is good, and that's kind of a staple of a lot of these act items, but it's the ability to steal on an A-tier item. Like, if this was B-tier, it would definitely be a lot better. I would almost never take this, unless I really, really needed to steal something that far. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Just... This is such a meh item. Really not good. Alright. Uh, Brick of Cash. I'll put C tier. I like Brick of Cash. 
it's pretty simple. Uh, you just have a little dude that points at the secret walls. Um, it's easy to forget about the guy, or like forget that you have this and not be looking for the little guy because he's hard to spot. He's gray and he's tiny. But if you remember you have it, I mean, it just tells you where the secrets are. You can buy this from the key merchant for one key, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. Not much to say about Parker Cash. It's just good to have. This does not hurt your build in any way. But it's not going to make a huge impact either, most likely. I mean, it can help your consumables if you need those. All right. Briefcase of cash. I don't think this is quite good enough to go in the S tier, but this is definitely A tier. This is one of the better A tier, or like red chest passives. You just pick this up, it gives you a bunch of money and some hegemony credits. And then if you don't want it anymore, you can sell it. When you, when you drop this thing, you lose none of the money. You just get the money when you pick it up. So you can sell it for even more money. Uh, I mean, this just sets up your shop economy for the rest of the run, effectively. So especially if you see this early on, it's just like, huh, I can buy whatever I want forever. It's really nice. Uh, nothing wrong with a ton of money. Definitely A tier. I have a broccoli. Man, I feel like this is an overrated one. I don't know why people like broccoli so much. I feel like it's like the long list of things that it does, I guess? I think it's good, mostly because of the move speed. Like, the move speed makes the biggest difference here. It's only like a 10% damage up, which 10% is nice. It's not bad. It makes it so you, if you get hit, you like sometimes don't take damage. I don't even know what the percentage is, which is like, okay, <laughs> I guess. And it gives move speed. The move speed is the big reason why I'm putting it in A tier. Um, like, yeah, this is a good item, but I don't, I don't really get it. I don't know why people rate this, like, S tier regularly. Like, it's very strange to me. This isn't a game winning item. It's just, like, a pretty good A tier item. I don't know. How about bug boots? Bug boots? I'd say the biggest problem with bug boots is that they're B tier. They come from green chests. Like, they're very expensive. For what they do. They I don't think these even give you move speed. I think they just make it so you... When you roll, you have poison behind you. So you can use this to defuse chests, which is kind of nice. And you're immune to poison. Like... These just usually aren't worth the money. Like, if you, if you get these from a chest, they're nice to have, especially the poison resistance for Rat Phase 1 is super useful. And being able to defuse chests is, like, relatively nice, but as far as a diffuser goes, this is way too expensive. It's usually not worth, unless you're rich. Uh, I'll just put it in useful. Like, if these were C-tier, they would be a lot better. They're just too expensive. But if you see it in a chest, it's nice. <laughs> Bullet Idol. Ooh. Ooh. I like Bullet Idol. When you take damage, you deal a good amount of damage to everything in the room. Like, enough that you're probably gonna- you're gonna kill most things in the room. I like Bullet Idol, and I don't even get hit that much. It's just, if I get hit, I'm probably in a pretty bad situation, personally. So I like... dealing that room-wide damage. Um, I don't think it's good enough to go in B tier. I'll put it in C tier, just because, like, ideally you just wouldn't get hit, obviously. But yeah, in those situations where you're just in a super bad spot and you do get hit, instead of getting hit again or again, or, like, multiple times after that, everything just dies. So, I like Bullet Idol, personally. Even though I get hit very rarely, it's just, it's just useful. All right. Bullet time. Dude, I don't know what it is. I feel like I never use this active item. And I don't... I don't know how many other people use this or, like, how good people think this is. But I feel like this is a really good active item that I just don't utilize enough. Because I typically don't need active items for... 
like bosses and stuff. But even for room clear, this is great if you're in a bad situation. It has a decent cooldown as far as I know. It's D tier, so it's pretty cheap. You're going to see it from your brown chests that you should be opening regardless. Because brown chests are really good to open. I'm going to put this in B tier. I mean, I never use this, but I feel like it, it stacks up with like Bomb, Ice Bomb, Boomerang. Like, I would, you could even argue this is better than Boomerang because it's really useful against bosses. I believe the duration on the effect is a little bit short, but I don't know, man. This is a solid item. All right, Bumble, it's... This might be a hot take. Bumble, it's suck. These suck. I would put these in F tier if we were just saying this is Hero Shrine. I would literally put these in F tier. You should never pick these up under any circumstance. But... We'll put it in D tier. Like, Bs in this game are not good. Uh, let's just get that out of the way. Unless... It's something like Stinger or Beehive. Stinger and Beehive are actually quite good guns. I believe I put both of those in like B tier on the tier list. But that's because you choose when you shoot the bees. That is that is the key part of those guns. Like Beehive is great against bosses. And it's, uh, it's pretty mad in room clear, but it's really good boss clear. But you're choosing when to use that boss clear. This, you just shoot random bees. And that's very bad because those guys that like grab your bullets and shoot them back at you, if they grab a bee, that bee is going to hit you a lot of times. A lot of times. So if you see one of those, you need to like react instantly to drop this or you're going to get screwed, especially in Hero Shrine. It, it, this guy will just destroy you if you have this item. And the ups, like, this doesn't add that much damage in the first place. It adds a little bit of damage, but it's not that good. It's not worth having to think about that, in my opinion. Like, I'll pick this up and sell it immediately if I see it, or I just won't pick it up at all. It's not even S or A tier. Like, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Definitely D tier item. Alright, C4. So, Proximity Mine is something that I have said I don't use that much. And C4, I've used quite a bit. C4 is going... I think this is C tier. I don't think it's quite good enough to go B tier, but I love C4. I love C4. This item is so good. It has the same upside as, like, Bomb for that explosion utility, where you plant the C4, and then you can... You can blow it up at the right time when bullets are coming at you that you want to destroy. It has upsides and downsides compared to Bomb. Overall, I think it's worse than Bomb. A big reason for that is because this can't open the secret rooms, but it's just worse utility in bosses in general because the C4 is planted at your feet. You don't throw the C4. You throw the Bomb, which is great. It makes it better for, like, room clear and stuff. This is only useful for, like, boss utility against Old King and such. But you can plant... The good thing about C4 is you plant the C4 in front of you, and then you back up, and then if any bullets are coming at you that are problematic, not just like the old king ring, you can react instantly. You just blow up the C4, because it's in between you and the boss. Um, the th problem with that is you need to use the C4 quickly, because you'll need to be like going around the room. And if you don't use the C4 like right after you plant it, it's going to be in a bad position for you to like utilize it. So it's a little bit harder to plan around. But I feel like that utility is really great. That's the only good thing about C4. I mean, it's very you can't really use this in room clear unless you're like in really early floors where the enemies are coming at you and you can just plant the C4 and blow them up. Cuz a lot of later enemies are just going to be shooting you from afar. It's pretty niche, but I feel like that use against Old King is good enough. Because Old King is such a problem. If you're going to the Abbey consistently. Alright, Cartographer's Ring. I mean, uh, I mean, there's not, there's like nothing to say about this. It just sometimes gives you the map for the floor. And it's like C tier? Is this C tier or D tier? I don't even know. Like, if you have a ton of money and you see this, you could buy it. If you open a chest, of course, you pick it up. I mean, that, nothing wrong with Cartographer's Ring. It just, yeah, it doesn't do a whole lot. <clears throat> Definitely useful. Alright. The Cat Throne. Cat Throne is probably A tier. I mean, it's Flight. Flight is nice in this game. It's not quite as good as, like, Flight in Isaac. 
but flight is still nice because it gives you immunity to all like creep like oil fire on the ground uh ice poison electrified water if there's somehow electrified water that you're like not already immune to from battery bullets i mean yeah and it lets you fly over pits which is just convenient i mean yeah flight is just good plus this has the benefit of when you roll you shoot all these like shots around you they're not that useful like the shots don't do that much but they're usually a good thing i mean it's just a little bit of extra damage every time you roll which isn't a bad thing i mean I don't think this item would be much worse if it didn't have that. But it's a nice bonus. Definitely an A tier. Alright. Chef grenades. This goes in... I'll put this in B tier. So, of course, if you're playing Hero Shrine, this is almost useless. Because you pretty much never want to be stealing in Hero Shrine. Unless something's really good and you can't afford it. But if you're playing non-hero shine, this is just... This allows you to steal three things, which is great. I mean, stealing is awesome in this game, especially non-hero shine, because your economy is so weak all the time. You can almost never afford everything you want, so having the ability to steal just gets you that much closer. You can steal rat key with this. You can go to the abbey and steal, like, whatever A or B tier gun is probably in the shop. Gun or item. Steal from the forge shop. I mean, yeah. It's just the ability to steal three things. Really nice. Alright, chance bullets. I hate chance bullets, bro. I hate this item. So... <laughs> it shoots a random bullet from one of your guns. I don't like inconsistency with my guns. That's, that's one thing that you might see in this tier list overall. Like, I don't like bum bullets because they'll inconsistently make you die to those stupid guys that grab your bullets. And I don't like this because it it makes your damage inconsistent. And I believe the only way to like really make this insane is to drop all your guns except for like a fast shooting gun and like a slow shooting gun. <laughs> Which is like, why would you drop all your guns for this stupid item? It's not worth it. I, I usually leave this on the ground. It's also a B tier item, so like this is really expensive in the shop. Chance bullets just, like, aren't good. I, I, I don't know. I don't think... I believe this doesn't even work with your starter, but I don't remember. I I never use this. No one should ever use this. Really. It's just... Like, why? Alright. Chaos Amulet is... Ridiculously overrated. Wow. This is an A-tier item. It's like the other amulets, where you get an extra blank every single floor. And, like, you just... Not every single floor you get plus one blanks. You just... Your base number of blanks goes up. And it has the effect of all the other amulets, except for gold amulet. I... I want to say this doesn't have the effect of golden amulet. Um... Which is a big problem. If this had the effect of Golden Amulet, it would probably be, like, as good as Golden Amulet. But it's just the Elemental Amulets combined. The real problem with this is being A tier. Like, I don't know. It's so expensive. And if you see it in a chest, you're giving up your Magnificence for the extra blank per floor. Because the effect, like, you freeze stuff, you, you poison stuff, you light stuff on fire. That's not going to do a whole lot. Especially, I hate the freeze effect. The freeze effect is so annoying. Because, like I said, if you have like blank bullets or something that's blanking really often and you have this it's going to be freezing enemies that you don't want frozen because they either can't take damage while they're frozen or they'll freeze before they even spawn so you have to wait for them to unfreeze before you can even kill them it's just annoying like this item just annoys me that's why it's so low i'm not gonna say it sucks but it sucks I don't think this is worth it. I'm not going to put it in D tier just because of the extra blank per floor and stuff like that. But yeah, not very good. Alright, Chaos Bullets. Right next to Chaos Amulet. <laughs> I don't like Chaos Bullets. Once again, like... I don't know, man. It's just the inconsistency. Like... Some of your bullets are going to be fast, some of them are going to be slow, so it's going to be harder to hit stuff. 
They can sometimes freeze stuff, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, but it's inconsistent. You're not consistently freezing anything. So if you start, like, if you want to freeze something, you're probably not going to shoot enough frozen bullets to actually freeze it. The one good thing about chaos bullets, which is why it's in C tier and not maybe D tier, is it can slow down enemies. Slow is like one of the best status effects, probably the second best stat effect. I would say the best is freeze, the second best is slow. Slow is so insanely good against bosses that this kind of becomes worth it. If you're especially if your boss clear is weak and you're going into like lich or floor 3. Because lich phase slowing down lich phase 3 is amazing. Cuz he likes to move around with that one attack where he like spins and goes up and down the middle of the arena and Slowing is amazing against Tank and Cannon Balrog. So yeah, that that alone makes this usually worth it. But I don't I don't like these. I just don't like the inconsistency. All right, Charmhorn. I'm gonna put Charmhorn right next to Chaff Grenades, just because Charmhorn is a way to steal, which is good. It's actually a better way to steal than Chaff Grenade because you can steal infinitely rather than only three times. And this has extra utility where you can, uh, you can charm enemies near you in rooms. So it has like room clear potential, which is nice. So this is a lot better than Chaff Grenade, but I don't think it's bet. I don't think it's good enough to go up to A tier because of those extra abilities. Cause the steal is really what matters here. The charming is nice, like I said, but yeah, just not enough to go up here. The stealing is really the big thing about this. But yeah, this is nice. I like uh, I like Charmhorn. I'm usually happy to see it, even if I'm playing Hero Shrine, just because the charming is kind of useful. All right, Charm Rounds. Uh, I'll put these in B tier as well. I mean, you just randomly charm stuff. It's inconsistent, which is a little bit annoying. Like, if you're trying to charm a big enemy, you don't know if you're actually going to get the charm off in a useful amount of time before it dies or something like that. But, I mean, it'll just randomly charm anything, which is always useful, so... Yeah, this is solid. I usually wouldn't go out of my way to buy this if I can't afford it, but if I get it out of a chest, I'm I'm happy to see it. Alright, chest teleporter is C tier. Chest teleporter is weird. This is a weird one. It's been a long time since I've used this. I'm sure the wiki could give you the details of how this thing works, but getting this thing to work is so annoying because you can only have one chest teleported at a time. Let's say I see I see a blue chest and I want to teleport it. So I use the teleporter on it. After I use the teleport on it, I cannot teleport another chest until I see that C tier chest. Well, I don't think you necessarily have to see it, but if the C tier chest is sent to the next floor, for example, and you teleport another chest, um, either you lose the C tier chest or both chests just vanish. I can't remember which. I haven't used this thing in forever. I'm sure the wiki could tell you. But you can only have one chest teleporting at a time. Sometimes the chest will teleport to, like, the boss entrance. So, like, that C-tier chest I teleported could teleport to the boss entrance. So I haven't necessarily lost it if I teleport another chest, I don't think. Just, you're risking it if you haven't seen it yet. So, it'll teleport a chest to the next floor, and it'll upgrade it. I think it usually upgrades it. But it probably has a chance. I think it has a chance not to. I really haven't used this thing in forever. It's not that good. It's not worth it. And if you drop it, I think you also lose all your chests, right? Like, you have to be so careful to not drop this thing or... Yeah. In the chat, I'm being told, if you drop it, you lose everything. Like, it's just... You have to commit so hard to this thing, and it's not even that good. I will say the one really nice synergy with this gun. If you have the ability to look inside chests with chest teleporter, it becomes way better. Because let's say you have the exotic or you have the siren synergy that lets you look inside chests. Or even like the charm bow synergy that lets you look inside chests. Any of those. You can look inside the chest and if you don't like what you see, you just teleport it. <laughs> and you effectively re-roll what's inside of it. Which is pretty nice. But other than that, I would never use this thing. 
You can like buy, I think you can buy this for two keys from the key merchant. It's just not worth it. Um, I, this being a tier makes it even worse. Like if you choose to pick this up, you're giving up your magnificence for it. So I don't know. I just don't think this is ever worth it. All right. Chicken flute. This is one of the better familiars. I'm not going to lie. Because you can use this to block bullets from yourself. I'm only going to put it in B tier because it's a familiar. But if you just put the chicken between yourself and like rat phase one, for example. If you, yeah, if you're just standing behind the chicken, rat phase one can't hurt you. Except for the attack where he's like pulling the bullets in from behind you. Or if you're standing in the poison. You just stand behind the chicken and you're invincible. Plus the chicken does decent damage by itself. Like... Stuff shoots the chicken, and then he summons chickens and just, like, clears the rooms and does good boss damage. So, again, this is really nice if you have low boss damage. But if you have good boss damage, it's not the best, but it's not going to hurt you a ton. Because it's not going to summon chickens super often. And this is usually nice to have in rooms, because those chickens clear pretty efficiently. I like the chicken flute, actually. This is one of the familiars that I like more than others. Okay, cigarettes. This... Okay, this one's going to take a bit of explaining. I know I've taken a while explaining these, but this one is going to take some explanation. Cigarettes, how good this is changes a lot, where you, depending on where you are in your gungeon like, experience. And you're not going to expect me to say what I'm about to say, I guarantee you. Are almost guaranteed. So when you start off, this thing sucks, obviously. So what this does is you... It's an active item. You can use it infinitely. No cooldown. When you use it, it deals one damage to you. And you get one coolness. Pretty simple. When you start off, this thing sucks. Because obviously you need all the health you can get. Every single health you pick that drops is going directly into your health bar. Then you become a little bit better. You're like a mediocre player. Then you're good enough to that you have extra HP every single floor, but you don't have a lot of armor. Like, you're not stacking a lot of armor. You have, like, one, two, maybe three armor at a time only. Unless you're on a really strong run. That's when Cigarettes is at its best. Because you can use all that extra health without sacrificing a crap ton of armor to get to it. So it's just f a ton of free coolness, effectively. Which is really good, actually. I mean, that much coolness for free is just, like, nice. This is worth your active slot. But then, there's the level after that. And this especially applies to Hero Shrine, because Hero Shrine is much more difficult than regular runs. Um, where you're stacking a ton of armor. Like, you're stacking 10, 15 armor per run. Um... This is not good, because you have, you'd have to be smoking your armor to get to your health. And smoking your armor for coolness, instead of stacking your armor, is not worth it. If you're Especially if you're trying to, like, hero, or streak, lich streak, hero shrine, like I do. It's just not worth it. The coolness is not good enough. The ar armor, stacking armor is how you win in this game, especially in hero shrine. But then, there's the theoretical next level that Literally no one is at. Um, no one is this good. Where you literally take no damage ever. And you're not worried about anything. And you can just smoke all your health to like one heart. And you never die. Uh, no streaker is at that level. No streaker is that good. I mean, I, I have the world record. I have a thousand Paradox Hero Shrine Lich Streak. And I'm not there. I would rather stack armor than get coolness. So... This is definitely the be at its best when you're, like, a mediocre player who has extra health, but they're not stacking a lot of armor. Uh, a synergy worth mentioning is cigarettes plus full metal jacket. If you have full metal jacket, you can just smoke your blanks at the end of each floor. Or even you use the cigarettes instead of using a blank, where you so you get the coolness and it uses the blank. That's a nice synergy. There's a couple other kind of niche synergies, but yeah, overall, I'll put this in C tier. It really depends where you are in the game, but I don't think it's that good. 
All right, clear Guanstone. Uh, C tier. I mean, it just gives you like poison immunity. If you have clear Guanstone, it like gives you fire immunity as well. I think, but yeah, this is, like pretty whatever item. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't do a lot. Clone S tier. I don't like clone that much. The problem with clone is it gets boring. Like after you do like 20, 30 clone runs, it just gets so old. I'm over the clone runs. Like I'm just over it. It's so, it takes way too long. It's kind of boring, but this is an instant win item. And if you've, if you've only done a few clone runs or you've never done a clone run, it's really fun to just get super OP. But yeah, I don't like this item very much, but I always pick it up because it guarantees you're gonna win if things go bad. All right, Chlorinthy Ring, up a C tier. I mean, it's just faster dodge rolls. Faster dodge rolls can kind of screw you up sometimes if you're really used to your dodge roll timing, but it can be nice. It's kind of expensive for what it does, but if you get it from a chest, you usually want to pick it up. It's not bad. Uh, Clown Mask is A tier. This thing is incredible. So this gives you one of the three Payday familiars. I can't remember their names. I know they have names from Payday 2. Um, <clears throat> and all the payday familiars are pretty good. I mean, even the guy that just, like, tasers people and stuns them is not bad to have. The shotgun guy does so much damage that he's actually useful for room clear because <laughs> he can solo a lot of enemies. And if you have no damage, like other familiars, he's going to help your boss clear a lot, except he actually does good damage compared to them. Um... And then there's the guy who blanks, where if a bullet comes near you, he blanks. Similar to, like, the Holy Knight Sir Junkin. Which is really useful. So, yeah. And it's worth mentioning. If you have one of the other two Payday items and you have the Clown Mask, you get a Payday Familiar from each of the Payday items. So, if you have all three Payday items, you have all three Familiars. So yeah, this is really good. Those are some of the better familiars in the game. All right. Our first F-tier item, Cluster Bomb. Yay! Good job, Cluster Bomb. Finally, we have something in the F-tier. Never use this thing. What? I I don't even know how this thing works. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, sometimes enemies walk into it and they explode. Sometimes it just does nothing. The worst thing about this is it damages you. If the Cluster Bomb explodes near you, you take damage, I believe. Never, like, just, just don't, don't, just don't. If you have this, try to sell it ASAP. And if you see a different active item, literally any other active item, drop this for it. Drop this for the proximity mine. It is better. Like, oh my god, man. This, it, it just sucks. Alright, anyway. Cog of Battle. A tier. I mean, this just gives you... I. How much damage does this even give you when you re... This gives you a ridiculous damage multiplier when you hit the active reload. Which is so good. And it makes you reload faster if you're hitting the active reload effectively. Which is really nice. Um, it's a little bit awkward to use. Like, you need to be used to the active reload. But if you get used to it, it's really nice. Um... Yeah. All right, Coin Crown. This is another synergy item, similar to Bionic Leg. Because Coin Crown by itself, does, it doesn't do a whole lot. It gives you, like, the occasional five casing drop after you clear a room. So, buying this is usually worth it, because over the course of... Unless you immediately need a lot of money, this is kind of an investment. Because it'll, like, pay for itself very slowly, but eventually. So if you can make the initial investment, this is worth it. Not only for the money, but for the synergy power, because this has a lot of good synergies. This synergizes with, like, Gilded Bullets, I believe, which is one of the... Gilded Bullets, they're one of the best bullet modifiers in the game. It synergizes with, like... I believe this gives Queen Gungeon Ant, which is one of the best gun synergies. Um, Yeah, I mean, if I see this in the shop, I usually buy it. Mostly for the synergies, but the money is kind of nice. Alright, 
cooling leak. I mean, it's kind of weird this is on here because it's you can only get this by starting with the robot. It's useful. All it does is, well, not all it does, but most of what it does is just diffuse chests. But early game, it's pretty useful for room clear. Like you just lay down the water and then shoot it as a robot. And it'll just deal damage over time. It's definitely useful, but usually you want to get rid of this as soon as you have another diffuser or you see another active item and you don't necessarily need a diffuser. You don't need a diffuser if you have another gun that diffuses or you have a lot of keys. If you have a lot of keys, then yeah, you can just open the chest instead of diffusing it, so. Usually you're going to get rid of this after, like, the oubliette or floor two, but until then, it's pretty nice. Copper amulet. <clears throat> it's nice. I mean, getting a blank every floor is nice. It's not A tier like the chaos amulet, so you're not getting magnificence for it. Lighting stuff on fire when you blank doesn't really matter. I believe this has a couple synergies. I don't remember if this gives Phoenix up. Um, yeah, I don't. I I honestly don't remember what synergies this gives. I don't remember them being good enough that it's like a real factor. But yeah, <laughs> if you have money and you want more blanks per floor, it's nice. Just probably don't buy it for the fire effect. Crisis Stone. Ooh, this is a tough one. I think it goes B tier. So this is an A tier passive. When you fully reload your clip, it summons a shield that makes you take no damage for the duration of the reload. So this is really good if you have like long reload guns. But, okay, here's, here's an issue. If you have long reload guns, usually you don't wanna be going through the long reload animation you want to be dropping the gun and then picking it up so it reloads instantly so you can start doing damage again. So, all of a sudden, your long reload guns that would be really good with Crisis Stone, it becomes better to not utilize the Crisis Stone, usually. Which is kind of weird. Um, Crisis Stone is a really good synergy with cigarettes. If you have Crisis Stone plus cigarettes, you can activate the Crisis Stone and then just smoke a ton of cigarettes while it's up and you take no damage. That's kind of a cool synergy, if you happen to have those, but it really doesn't affect my rating of this. I mean, this could even go C tier. I don't know. I'll put a B tier just because the occasional invincibility is kind of cool if you're just regularly reloading stuff, but yeah, pretty underwhelming overall. Crutch. I'll put Crutch B tier. Crutch is better than homing bullets, in my opinion. I can't tell you why. <laughs> I can't remember the- I actually can't remember the difference between Crutch and Homing Bullets. There was a very important difference. I'm sure the wiki could tell you. It's been way too long, but I do know I like Crutch better than Homing Bullets. <laughs> I'm sorry, I- I couldn't tell you why, I don't remember. But Crutch is probably B tier, Homing Bullets are probably C tier. I'm not gonna bother looking things up and researching to <laughs> tell you why that is. <laughs> The homing works differently on them, effectively, is what it is. Okay. Um, curse bullets. I don't think curse bullets are S tier. They're A tier. So curse bullets, they give you one curse, and for every curse you have, you get 10% extra damage, which is pretty good. I mean, if you have 10 curse, you have Lord of the Jammed, this is doubling your damage, which is cool. Double damage, that's nice. And even if you just have lower curse amounts, it's a big damage up. I mean, you have three curse, that's 30%. That's significant. So it's pretty nice. I, It's kind of iffy whether this is worth spawning Lord of the Jammed for in a Hero Shrine run or not. In my opinion, it depends on how experienced you are. Like, if you're very experienced dealing with Lord of the Jammed, the double damage is usually worth it. I will usually buy this or pick it up if I see it on a Hero Shrine run. But if you're like newer to Hero Shrine streaking and you're not as experienced with dealing with Lord of the Jammed, especially during your boss fights and such, like Old King or the Rat, um, it might be a bad idea to take this. But then again, it could be good practice for your Lord of the Jammed. So it's kind of it kind of depends. But yeah. Always really happy to see this in general. Alright, Daruma. I don't like Daruma. It's quite good, though. 
I'll put it in A tier. This is one of the better actives in the game. When you roll over a bullet for a brief moment, you can activate the Daruma for a just a blank. It's just a full blank. Which is really good, especially for bosses, but even in rooms, it's pretty nice. Like, if you happen to roll over a bullet, you can just blank, and maybe you'll open a secret. You'll always blank all the bullets on screen. You need to be careful that you're not rolling over bullets that you shouldn't be with this thing. Like, don't go out of your way to be rolling over random bullets, because that's a good way to get hit. Just, if you happen to roll over a bullet, and you see the indicator, that's when you would proc it. Yeah. I don't like Daruma, personally. But... I can't say it sucks. It's really, really strong. Definitely A tier. Alright, Decoy. Decoy is rough. Because I think Decoy is better than these two stealing items. But not for stealing. Decoy is not very good for stealing. Because if you put down the decoy, you can only steal once with it. Like, let's say you put down the decoy in, well, a black market's a bad example let's say you put down the decoy on floor four right you put down the decoy on floor four um because you want to steal something but then you realize oh crap i wanted to buy this key or even uh, this applies to any floor actually you put down the decoy you steal something big because you saw it and you're excited to get it and then you realize oh crap i need to buy this key to open the chest or to go to the rat or whatever it's too late, buddy. Unless you put the decoy in front of the door where you can shoot the decoy from outside the shop. Or you can kill it insanely quickly with, like, a fast fire rate weapon. That decoy is not going anywhere. You're going to be forced to steal from that shop unless you can destroy it somehow. Which is why it is worse for stealing than other things. Because once you lay it down, you're committed for that floor. You cannot get rid of it unless you put it in front of the doorway to shoot it. Or something like that. But, I mean, other than that, it's just a regular stealing item that has a really good combat utility. So, if you put down the decoy, all the enemies think you are the decoy. So they'll just walk towards it and shoot it. And it has a lot of health. It needs to be shot quite a few times before it gets destroyed. So if you're in a boss fight like Cannon Balrog or something, Cannon Balrog, um, Lobby Lord, stuff like that, where they're just like slowly moving into you, or even tank, you just put it in the corner and then run away. And then the, the decoy will distract them for a good time. This is one of the best boss clear utility stealing items. Which is why you could consider... I, I'd consider putting this in A tier. I love decoy. You know, I, I think it's good enough in combat. I'll put it in A tier. I mean, this thing is just so good for like every boss. Like even the dragon. You just put down the, down the decoy when he does the fire breath, if you're in a bad position, and then you're good. Like, it'll die pretty quick, but it'll die slowly enough that you can reposition. And the attack will be over quick enough after that, that it won't matter if you're in a bad position. So yeah, combat ability, I think it's good enough for A tier. Devolver rounds. I don't like these. They're not that good. I'll put, it in, I'll put them in useful, but especially in Hero Shrine, if you're shooting a jammed guy... He has a lot of health, you get him pretty low, and then he transforms into a jammed arrowkin. I mean, the arrowkins are, if they're jammed, they're pretty tanky. So, this is only effective if you're transforming big guys. This is why Devolver is very good, and Devolver rounds are pretty meh. This used to be the worst item in the game, easily, until they buffed it. It used to, like, just transform enemies into, like, stronger versions of enemies a good amount of the time, randomly. Uh, yeah, it, it was terrible. But then they buffed it to make it only turn them into Arrowkin, and it became a lot better. But yeah, I don't like the random nature of this. A lot of the time, especially in Hero Shrine, you just would rather kill them instead of transforming them. But it's, it's not bad. It can be useful sometimes, especially in non-Hero Shrine. All right. Uh, the Disarming Personality, I believe this is called. Pretty good. Uh, I'll put it in Useful. I mean, it makes shops a little bit cheaper. It's usually not worth buying. Just because it doesn't give enough value unless you buy it really early on. But if you get it from a chest, I mean, it, it helps. It's useful, for sure. Dog. I'll put Dog in B tier. It just gives consumables 
every once in a while. It's just extra key income, really. It's pretty cute. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm usually happy when I see dog. Probably the best thing about dog is it's in the D tier. So if you see it in the shop, it's a lot of the time worth buying, especially if you're on like floor one. If you're on floor one and you see dog in the shop, unless you need a lot of money to like get to the rat key or buy the rat key if you're not playing Hero Shrine, uh, maybe it won't make sense to buy it. But yeah, usually you want to buy this thing. That D tier helps a lot. Alright, hmm. Where is... I kind of want to rate Potion of Gun Friendship right now with Double Vision. Where is it? These are alphabetical. So it would be... Where's the P's? Pig? Or no, this is... What is this called? God, I don't remember what this is called. Here it is. Potion of Gun Friendship. Now let's move this up here. We're going to talk about these at the same time because there's a very important difference between these two. And I will explain that. So, this is... This is either A tier or B tier. This is one of the best damage boosting actives. The double vision. It just makes you shoot twice as much. So, it's really good early on if you're not even close to hitting the damage cap. Or if you're bad at min-maxing, it's great. If you're just constantly far away from the damage cap. But if you're hitting the damage cap, then you... You can sometimes use this with, like, lower... Purposefully lower damage weapons that are more efficient ammo-wise. The big thing with double vision is it doesn't make you shoot twice as much. You're not using twice as much ammo when you use this thing. It's just doubling your shots. So there's no downside ammo-wise to using this thing. Like, it's just positive. I think it's good enough for A tier. I mean, if you have this with glass cannon, it's ridiculous. Which I love, but yeah. And Potion of Gun Friendship is... C tier! This is one of the most overrated things in the game. Dude, okay. This might be, like, a really hot take. But this is not a good item. I could even put this in D tier. No, I will. I'll, I'm putting this in D tier. This is not a good item. The big difference between these two is this makes you shoot more bullets. Okay, let me explain this concept to you. Shooting more bullets in Enter the Gungeon is not good. It's not good. You use more ammo and you use your ammo less efficiently a lot of the time with most guns. There's a couple exceptions like um, Stone Dome and stuff where you have a ton of ammo and it shoots really slow. So And it homes. So if you have a lot of fire rate with it, it's pretty good actually. But in general, most guns, you don't want to be shooting more bullets. You just want to be doing more damage. Because shooting more bullets wastes your ammo, it's less efficient ammo-wise, and it makes you hit damage cap faster without doing more actual damage. In general, doing slower, bigger hits versus damage cap is better than doing really fast, small hits and then hitting damage cap. Because you're with really small fast hits, you're wasting more ammo and you're hitting it faster while doing less damage. If you're doing slow big hits, you're not hitting the damage, you're not proccing the damage cap as much, and it's just like more efficient in general. That's the big difference between these two items. This this is just slower, bigger hits for free. This is smaller, or I mean slightly bigger, but faster hits. So you're hitting damage cap faster and you're wasting a ton of ammo. Like, even for room clear, I would never use this thing, because, unless I was in a really bad spot. Because you waste so much ammo. Whereas with this thing, if you just use it in a room, it's just free. It's just free extra damage. This is not a good item. Alright. Drill. Drill's uh, A tier. I almost put it this S tier, but I don't think it's that good. Well, is it? Oh, maybe it is, actually. You know what? Yeah, this is the best tier. Drill is so good. It's infinite keys, and it's extra room clears. So you get more consumables, which is kind of nice. And it, it has the clown mask thing, where if you have this with clown mask, you get that familiar. Uh, also, 
Oh, what chest does this come from? I think this comes from D tier chests, right? I think this is a D tier item. So it's really cheap to buy in the shop. Like if you see this in the shop, 99% of the time you'll buy it unless you literally cannot afford it somehow. So you get more money, sorry, you get more money for buying this thing because of the extra rooms and extra consumables. It's infinite keys, so you don't have to buy keys anymore, and you get the familiar. This thing is just insane. S tier. All right, drum clip. Uh, I don't like drum clip. I feel like bigger clips is not that good because let's say it's, I mean, this is damage cap again. A lot of the common theme of this tier list is damage cap. If you are shooting something like, I don't know, any time you have really high damage, let's just give an, a good example of like Gunder Fury. Let's say you have a Gunder Fury. And you, you're shooting the boss. Like, having a longer clip isn't going to change how quick you're killing him, you know? Because you're shooting really slow, and it just, like, makes it so you have to shoot really slow a little bit longer before you reload. Having faster reload speed is better than this, in general, because it, it's more efficient ammo-wise, and having that break between shooting is good for resetting the damage cap. It's just normally the regular reload speed is a little bit long for that. So that's why oiled cylinder is a lot better than this. Plus, oiled cylinder is better synergies in general. But like, this isn't bad. I'll usually take it if I see it. But I like drum clip doesn't do a whole lot. I would never buy this. It's a little too expensive for what it does. Duct tape is D tier. This is not good. For the same reason as like everything else. It's for, uh, exactly, actually, for the same reason as Potion of Gun Friendship. This just makes you shoot more bullets and use more ammo. Wow, that's not good. Because shooting more bullets in general is just going to make you hit the damage cap faster. Which doesn't matter. You're just wasting more ammo and killing the boss slower than if you used like a gun that's doing less damage. And not, barely not... Like, barely hitting the damage cap or not quite hitting. This is not good. Plus, you're giving up your Magnificence for it. The only time this is good is if you're duct taping something to Glass Cannon, Yari Launcher, or Makeshift Cannon. Because then you ignore damage cap. Then this thing is, like, S tier. But I would... Like, you can argue duct tape is nice for, like, room clear stuff, I guess. Like, oh, you duct tape something to Tentacle or whatever. But, like... I feel like it's usually just not worth losing the Magnificence. This is not a good... This is one of the most overrated items in my opinion. Because you can duct tape it to, like, Glass Cannon, I'm tempted to put it C tier. This is probably where it belongs because of that potential of duct taping it to Glass Cannon, but out of spite for this thing, it's going D tier. This thing is not good. All right, easy reload bullets. I mean, like... These are bad enough to put in meh. These do nothing. Like, these effectively do nothing. 90% of the time. Even if you have, like, a rocket launcher, it's safe. It's usually safer to drop the rocket launcher and pick it up. It's safer and faster, might I add, than rolling to reload it. Because if you roll to reload it, you're, like, putting yourself in a weird position a lot of the time, and it's slower, because you have to, like, go through the whole roll animation and then shoot and then roll again. And that's like that repositions you when you probably don't want to be repositioned. Like, it's whenever this would be useful, it's always pretty much always better to just drop the gun and pick it up. Like, this does nothing. There's no reason to not pick it up, but there's no reason to like buy it or anything. It it does nothing. Um, Elder Blank. It's probably A tier. I don't think this is quite good enough to be S tier, but this not being, this being in, I believe this is B tier, isn't it, in the game? It helps us a lot. I mean, Elder Blank is great. It's just infinite blanks that cool down. It gives you a curse when you pick it up, but sometimes that curse is worth it, even in Hero Shrine. If you need blanks, this makes it very hard to get hit because you can just use blanks like crazy. 
and has insane synergy with uh, Golden Amulet. If you have this plus Golden Amulet, it's just over. So this is this is definitely one of the better active items. All right, uh, Angry Photo. I like Angry Photo. I'm gonna put it in C tier, just because it's kind of niche. But sometimes that double damage is kind of nice, especially early on if you're like getting hit in rooms. If you get hit, you can like quickly clear a bunch of stuff if you're in a bad position. But this is nice with like damage stuff that breaks damage cap. Like if you have glass cannon, you can take damage on purpose to Lich just to kill him a little bit faster. It's unnecessary. Like it's probably better to not do it, but it's pretty funny. Um, I like this. I like enraging photo. Uh, that's why it's in C tier instead of D tier. A little bit of bias there. It probably belongs down here, but I like it. Escape rope. Escape rope is not that good. I know this is like better in speedruns, I believe, but speedruns now just want like prototype teleporter anyway. So, <laughs> um, I mean, this just teleports you to the shop. Maybe th I don't use this very often. Maybe there's some like amazing use for this that I'm not aware of because I never use it. But like, I don't know. This feels like just a waste of an active slot. Like this is an active where you just hold it until you can sell it, and that's it. Pretty bad. All right. Explosive decoy goes right here with these other steel items. This is pretty much only good for stealing because it's slightly better for stealing than decoy because it doesn't have that issue with decoy where you have to break it to like get rid of the stealing. It explodes by itself. So you can put down the explosive decoy and then steal whatever you want. And then if you realize, oh crap, I needed to buy this key, the decoy just explodes and then you can buy the key. So it's slightly better for stealing. But yeah, worse for like bosses and stuff because I believe it has less health before it explodes than the decoy. And yeah, it just has a timer, so it'll explode. And the explosion usually isn't gonna do anything against enemies. So yeah, usually I would rather have decoy, but this is slightly better for stealing because of that one scenario. Explosive rounds are A tier. This is a really good damage modifier or bullet modifier. It just makes your bullets explode. I mean, that's that's just good. So, one issue with this is if you are trying to utilize, like, RPG, Stinger, Bomb, anything where you're utilizing the explosion cooldown to destroy key shots in a boss fight, like against Old King against Rat, this makes it so you cannot do that anymore. Because the, these explosions are going to be eating that cooldown at ineffective times most of the time but i mean if you don't have any of that or you're not trying to utilize that it's just like random shots that are being destroyed which is kind of cool and yeah this just does a lot of damage so yeah a tier also worth mentioning this is a really good synergy with lowercase r oh my god eye patch i always forget this item exists why why why? I don't understand this item, man. So this gives you like a 35% damage up, I believe. Which is pretty good. But it reduces your accuracy by like 50% or something like that? Why? Why is this A tier? This is in red chests. 65% accuracy loss for the chat. Thank you. Like, I, I just... I don't understand this item. It makes no sense. Why is this A tier? Why does it reduce your accuracy and only give you 35% damage? Like, it just baffles me. This item makes no sense. It's not bad. It's it's in C tier. I'll put it in C tier. It's useful. But it's kind of niche. Because you need to be willing to get rid of your Magnificence. So usually you're only going to pick this up if you already have Magnificent stuff. And then even after that, you need to have Magnificent stuff already for it to be worth it. Or, maybe if you have some, like, really good accurate weapons. Like, if I have, I don't know, that, I forget what the armor gun is called. The gun with 300 rounds that is stronger when you have armor. Like, something like that, that's very accurate, where this accuracy isn't going to affect you. And you don't care about the Magnificence, you just kind of want the damage. Sometimes I'm like that, where I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to worry about magnif my Magnificence. I'm just going to take the damage. Um, you kind of need to have a very accurate weapon to, like, 
get use out of this. If you if you're using shotguns and stuff like that, you probably don't want this because the accuracy is going to make you do less damage or the inaccuracy. Or if you have a lot of accuracy upgrades, like you're playing a robot and you have this or you have scope or whatever, uh, then maybe this is worth it. I don't know. It's kind of niche for a damage up. It's weird. I don't know why they made it so niche. It's, this should at least be B tier, man. I don't know why this is A tier. If this was B tier, it'd be a lot better. It's so weird. I, I, I don't understand this item. At bullets. Oh man, this is one of the best damage upgrades. I can't remember how much damage this gives, but it's one of the fattest damage upgrades. It is A tier, and it does reduce your total ammo by a little bit on all your guns, but it's worth the damage upgrade. I don't think this is quite S tier, but yeah, this is... This gives you such a fat damage upgrade. It's so good. I love fat bullets. It's hard to not love fat bullets. I have flak bullets. These are kind of overrated, man. I don't know why. It's weird. Like, flak bullets don't do that much most of the time. They have some crazy synergies. Like, if you have drill from the chamber gun or you have Casey, then these are really good. But, they, I mean, typically they just don't do a whole lot. They don't hurt you or anything, but, like, I'm not going to break the bank to buy these or anything. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put them in solid tier, I suppose. Ooh. The... I always forget the name of this. But this makes bullets, like, wrap around you. <laughs> Does this give... I can't remember if this gives coolness or not. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, as an active item, this thing's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just it just makes bullets wrap around you, which if the bullet is traveling too quick, it's going to hit you anyway. Or if the bullet is too big, it'll hit you anyway. Like, it's unreliable as an invincibility active item. But, it, here's why it's in B tier. It gives Pistol Machine, which is one of the best synergies. Like, holding this in case you get Pistol Machine, or if you already have Machine Pistol... Keeping this in your inventory to get Pistol Machine is worth it, because Pistol Machine is so good and fairly common. That's why I'm putting it in B tier and not like C tier or D tier. That synergy is so impactful and so common that it's worth it. Alright, Frost Amulets. I don't like this thing. This thing is A tier, isn't it? Maybe I'm cooking. I'll put it in C tier. Um... I mean, it has the same issue as Chaos Amulet, where it's kind of annoying. <laughs> this thing annoys me. It freezes stuff I don't want frozen. It's B tier, okay. Yeah, I don't know. This is low because it annoys me. If I was being, like, completely honest, it's probably in B tier. But I never buy this. I never pick this up just because it annoys me. It, having the random stuff be frozen is just, like, I don't like it. Because it makes them spawn really slow or, like, be invincible for a long time. Same with these. Like, these are A tier. Um, these are just, like, an inconsistent freeze. You, when you freeze stuff, you want it to be consistent, at least. Like, Snowballer or the Cold 45 or stuff like that. You want it to be consistent. This does not consistently freeze things. You can't just, like look at something for two seconds or shoot at something for like a second or two and have it be frozen like snowballer or cold 45 would and it doesn't let you freeze bosses when you would want as well sometimes you're in a corner against like old king you're in a corner and there's a lot of shots coming at you you would pull out a snowballer shoot the old king for a second so he slows down so all the bullets can clear before his next attack comes out that's really strong utility with these you're just immediately going to freeze the boss and slow him down, and then he'll thaw. And once a boss thaws, it, like, won't slow down again, kind of. Which, it'll be harder for him to thaw with this, but I don't know. This being an A-tier item is kind of my issue with it, the main issue. The, it being an A-tier and it being kind of inconsistent, it's just, it's just not worth it. Overall. Alright. 
I don't know, man. FMJ. It's kind of crazy. I this this item is boring. It's lame. This is like the lamest item in the game. But it's so good. If you see this, you should buy it. It gives you an armor when you buy it, I believe. It makes it so when you get hit, you use a blank instead of losing your health. And it doesn't count as a hit. So if you get hit with this a couple times in a boss fight, as long as you just use your blanks and you don't use your armor or your health, you still get the master round. It's so good. Like, this is a complete crutch item. <laughs> I hate... I don't... I don't like this item. But... It's so strong. I usually get it, despite not liking it, just because of how good it is. It gives you such a safety net. I mean, it effectively gives you two armor every single floor, if you have no amulets. And more if you have amulets, or you just stack up blanks. Really good item. Oh, Galactic Medal of Valor. I'm putting it in C tier. I hate this thing. I hate this thing, okay? But I'll tell you why. The reason I hate this thing is you cannot drop it. Why can't you drop this thing, dude? Why? Why would they make it like that? <laughs> you can't drop the Galactic Medal of Valor. This is a huge accuracy up, a huge reload speed up, and it makes you shoot faster. But the problem is sometimes you don't want to reload faster for whatever reason, but it happens. And a lot of the time you don't want to shoot faster because of the stuff I talked about with this. And if you're in one of those situations and you've picked this up, well, guess what? You're committed. You can't, like, why? If you could drop this thing, I would put it in, like, A tier, probably. I hate that you can't drop this. Just why? Why, man? Why? Anyway, alright, gas mask. I mean, it's useful. It has, like, really crappy synergies with plate pistol, but, I mean, poison immunity for cheap. This is a D tier item. It's good. I mean, I could even put it in B tier because poison immunity is kind of good, but I'll put it down here. I love poison immunity for rat one. It just makes it so much easier. Uh, ghost bullets. Yeah, these are, I mean, I'll put these in B tier actually because these are really good for room clear, especially if you're like using your starter primarily. Like early on, these are amazing, but I mean... As soon as you're using, like, something like RPG or something that has an on-hit effect, this becomes very bad. Like, there's a ton of anti-synergies with Ghost Bullets where you just get to the point where you want to drop them. But early on, or if you're using your starter gun, these are great. So I'll put them in B tier, but they're kind of niche, actually. There's a lot of anti-synergies with this item. Gilded Bullets, S tier. S tier. Dude. Okay, I don't know what it is. Maybe the wiki says. I swear to God, this thing's damage multiplier multiplies with some different formula or something that makes it way stronger, like synergize way better with other damage upgrades. It has to. This gives an incredibly high damage upgrade, but it's not high enough that it should be making you do as much damage as that feels like it does. I swear to you. There's a different formula for this or something. Maybe the wiki has something about that. I'm not going to look it up at the moment, but this is crazy. You do more damage the more money you have. This has really good synergies. This gives Queen Gungeon Ant. This gives King Bomber. I want to say this... Doesn't this give you, like, Gilded Tables, I think? And it sounds familiar, this having a synergy with Coin Crown, I think. I don't remember what it would be, but... Like, this is one of the best... This is one of, if not the best, damage upgrade in the game. Uh, it's crazy, man. It's so good. All right, golden amulet. I'm gonna put golden amulet in A tier. This is the best amulet. Because it makes your blanks do like 100 damage. <laughs> Which is so good, because a lot of things do blanks, of, like a lot. Like clown mask, the blank guy does, blank bullets, if you have blank companion ring with blank with golden amulet and like some kind of active item that has low cooldown, like C4, bomb, I bomb companion app, um, even like bullet time would be fine. It becomes amazing. It makes this item good. That the reason this is so low is because that's a very niche uh, synergy. Like getting all those items together is kind of rare. 
but sorry but yeah I mean this that's just incredible plus it gives you the extra blank per floor I mean nothing wrong with this thing it's even the B tier which is great I I love golden ammo this is easily the best one by a lot so good I almost always buy that golden junk I mean you junk a chest sometimes you get like what 400 casings or whatever i mean how can this not be s tier you get that big of a boost to your economy you just win yeah not much to say with this one <laughs> um grappling hook i like grappling hook grappling hook is going b tier I don't know how people generally feel about Grappling Hook. I feel like most people are probably kind of indifferent towards this thing, but it's incredible. This is the worst stealing item in the game because if you if you use the Grappling Hook to steal something, you pretty much always have to steal it right in front of the shopkeep, in front of Bello, and he's just gonna close the shop. So this is the worst stealing item, but this thing is incredible. Or invincibility you just grapple across a room and while you're in the grappling animation flying across the room you're completely invincible so you can use this against like old king to get in a good position while being invincible or like rat because the room is so big you just grapple across and you're just invincible the whole time if there's a tough tough attack like it's so good man I love using this for invincibility plus a little bit more of a niche use of this thing is you can use the grappling hook as a very low cooldown, so you can use it to like stun enemies. But it's kind of risky because if you miss, <laughs> if you miss the enemy, and you like grapple to a wall behind it, you're gonna grapple to the wall right next to it, and then you're gonna get hit probably. So using it for that is kind of risky, especially on controller. Um, but it, it's a nice upside. I like grappling hook. I in fact I love grappling hook. I'll buy this a good amount of the time if I want an active item. I don't think it's quite good enough for A tier, but definitely a solid item. All right. What the hell is this thing? Why? Why? Wasn't this... This used to be S tier, I think. Now it's A tier, which is like big whoop. The difference between S and A tier is not that big. If this was B tier, it would be better. But this is not worth getting rid of your Magnificence for. Like, when, okay, so what this does is when you take damage, it has a chance to heal you. Which, first off, if you're taking damage and you're pretty good at the game, you're taking damage to your armor, not your health. So this does nothing. And second off, even if you're not very good and this would heal you, this isn't going to keep you alive that effectively. I mean, if you're super desperate, you might as well pick it up. But, like, if you're doing good, or if you're doing rel well, rather, in a run... It's not worth nuking your magnificence for this. Why? Why is this garbage A tier? If this was B tier, at least it would be worth picking up if you see it. But no, no. God damn. Why? Why is A tier like this? All right, gun boots. Uh, are they A tier or B tier? These give a little bit of movement speed, not a ton, but a little bit. Um. And they make it so when you dodge roll, you shoot bullets behind you. And the, it's like a shotgun blast of bullets. And if you dodge roll right next to something that's like spawning, like you see the reticle and then right when it spawns, you roll, you'll probably kill that enemy. It does a lot of damage if you do it point blank. But, uh, I don't know if these are A tier or B tier. They're pretty good, but like if the move speed were higher, I would definitely put them A tier. Is the damage worth putting them up with these other move speed items? I don't know. Uh, I'll put them B tier. I really like gun boots, but yeah, they're kind of hard to use. But the move speed is always nice. I do enjoy them. Gondromeda Strain. This, this is so good. This is one of the best, like, kind of damage upgrades in the game because it's not actually a damage upgrade 
it's a health downgrade for everything else. So, the reason why that's so good is because that doesn't contribute to your damage cap. If you have this and you have really high damage, it's not just going to do nothing or make you hit damage cap faster and hurt you actively. It just makes them have less health, which does help your build immensely. So this is good literally no matter what you have. If you have crazy damage and you're hitting damage cap, it's amazing. If you have low damage, like this is just always good because it's not actually a damage upgrade. It's a health downgrade. This is incredibly good. All right. Uh, Gungeon Blueprint. This is pretty good. How impactful is it, though? Like, I usually pick this up. I think it's worth getting rid of Magnificence for it. Excuse me. It's for it. But... Um... I'll put it in A tier. I really like it. <laughs> I mean, just having the map when you go for everything when you go to a floor is nice. And you get to see all the secrets. I'm kind of biased here. I mean, this is just convenient. I don't know. The fact that it shows you the secrets is super nice. It probably belongs more in, like, B tier, but yeah. I like Gungeon Blueprint. Alright. Gungeon Pepper. Ooh. Ah, I gotta go C tier. This just doesn't do enough damage, man. If this did, like, a bit more damage... Or even, like, double damage, I would probably put it in B tier. But even against, like, zombies, it just doesn't do enough, man. This is only really, really good in the room on the rat floor, where you have all those tiny robot rats going after you. Or in rat phase 2, where you have the robot rats again. But even then, I mean, if you're playing Hero Shrine and one of them is jammed, you still have to shoot it regardless. It has too much health. This... This just doesn't do enough damage. That's the big issue. If this did more damage or had like a bigger radius, it would be pretty good. But its stats are just so low. I don't know. This is the only. This is the kind of thing you only pick up if you have the money. You only buy if you have a lot of money, and you would just always pick it up because why not? But it's not going to do anything. Um, I could even put this D tier. I don't know, man. I feel like the rat thing makes it good enough. But, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, it just doesn't do enough. I wish I wish this were good. I wish it had a bigger radius or more damage or something, but... It's just usually not worth buying, even though it's only like a C-tier item. It's pretty cheap. Unless you have a lot of money, it's just not worth it. Just so sad. I wish this was better. Alright. Do, 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 do. All the Gun Knight armor is A tier. Even the Gun Knight helmet. The Gun Knight helmet is maybe the worst one, but this gives you... I believe this gives you two armor when you pick it up. And... Yeah, then the one armor every floor afterwards. This is maybe the weakest one because it's A tier. That's, that's it. That's the only reason. <laughs> Um, all the Gun Knight armor is just amazing. Getting one armor every floor is so good. Because stacking armor is how you win this game, like I said. So these are the way to stack armor. You get armor when you buy them, and you get one armor every floor. That gives you so much, like, of a cushion if you get in a bad situation. Just so good. Okay, but... I guess I should mention the synergy between these. If you get all of them at the same time, you get Cormorant. Or you turn into Cormorant, or however you say it. Where you have no reload time, your guns reload instantly, and you get like a bunch of curse. Okay, having no reload time is not good for damage cap, because you lose that naturally placed gap where you're not shooting and the damage cap can reset. So you're just wasting ammo because you're shooting way faster, effectively. And you're going to be hitting damage cap if you're trying to use, like, RPG or whatever. Like, having no relay time is just actually not good. <laughs> it's nice for room clear, but it's pretty bad for boss clear. You have to, like, you have to manually add back in that gap 
for the damage cap to reset if you have too much damage, or you're using something that's too good without the reload speed. So it's kind of not that great, actually. But, I mean, it's cool to have no reload time, I guess. Anyway, Gunsoul, I mean, what the, what the hell is this? It's a heart container. It's A tier. If you die with the Gunsoul, you get revived with, like, what, one heart or something like that? I can't remember how much health. I've literally never used this in my life, by the way. I've never once revived with the Gunsoul. Ever. Ever. Because, for one, you would have to die... There is min-max potential with this thing, like you can use this with cigarettes to get a lot of cigarette procs, but it's kind of risky if you're in a streak. Like, why would you take that risk? There's, It's not worth the risk for. So yeah, I've literally never used this myself, actually. <laughs> I only know what this does because of the wiki. And I've played this game for almost 3,000 hours. Never once used this. Like, I don't even put it in D tier. Like, what? I don't know. It's so weird. If you're bad enough to die with this thing, you're probably not good enough to get back to your stuff. And then continue the run. You're just gonna die. Like, all this is is just an A-tier heart container. Which is not good. Especially an A-tier heart container with no other special effects. Like, at least this thing has a special effect. It gives you some coolness, and it gives you damage when you get hit. This isn't even that good, but it's infinitely better than this. Anyway. Hazmat suit. I like hazmat suit. It gives you fire immunity. gives you uh, poison immunity. This is good. This is a good item. I don't know if it's quite good enough for A tier. Because it's, it's B tier. It comes from green chests, I mean. So it's a little bit expensive in shops. Like, B tier items are kind of expensive. But if you have the money, it's worth it. And if you get it from a chest, you're probably going to be pretty happy about it. It's not going to change your run completely or anything, but it's convenient. It's just kind of worse than flight, sadly, because you don't have the pit um the pit immunity as well. You don't have that extra mobility, but yeah, I'm never unhappy to see hazmat suit. All right, all the heart containers. Okay. Here is where I'm going to explain a very important mechanic in Enter the Gungeon. And this is a mechanic that is not very well documented as far as I know. So, in Enter the Gungeon, there is a mechanic called Heart Magnificence, okay? It's similar to Magnificence, but for hearts, okay? Every heart container you get makes it less likely for you to get other heart containers. If you are starting on floor one, you're way more likely to get these items from chests because you have no heart containers already. And this is a big reason why... I don't know why these are here. <laughs> That's a, This is a big reason why getting the master rounds is actually very important. Because... Let me skip that. Because master rounds actually... Uh, ra I don't know. I can't remember if it's actually raising or lowering your heart magnificence. They make it so you're less likely to get these, which is good. You actually don't want to be getting these because these are replacing your gun and item drops that are actually increasing your power. The only time you really want to get these is if you're like really new to the game, I guess, and you just need the extra health to survive regular floors. But yeah, every single one of these that you pick up, you're less likely to see another heart container. Including the master, or you're not less likely to see the master rounds, of course, but if you get the master rounds, you're way less likely to see these heart containers. Which is a thing I don't think a lot of people realize. Like, if you're really good at the game and you're getting your master rounds consistently, you're getting way fewer of these compared to a new player. So, that's an important concept to talk about. I don't think it's going to affect my rating of these, but I figured I would just mention it here. Um. I don't know where to put these, really. I mean, these are... I'll put them in C tier, I guess. Like, they don't help your build at all, really, but they help you keep alive. This is the best one, right here. The Heart Lunchbox, because this has an insane synergy with Lament's Configurum. This makes it so Lament can never damage you, which is really good. That's a really nice synergy. This is the best one. 
The worst one is this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. This gives magnificence, I'm pretty sure. All of these can come from A tier chests, but I don't think any of them give magnificence, except for this one. I could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong about that, then my bad. I'm sorry. I can't remember if I ever checked this when I was looking at the game files and stuff like that. Like, decompiling the game, but... I think this gives magnificence. I, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, we're on, under the assumption it does. This is technically the worst one. Because the coolness... It's like one coolness. It doesn't do that much. Um, this is a nice one. This gives a good synergy that lets you, like... Doesn't this let you replace hearts with, like, money? It's kind of nice. Um, you don't know if it does. They're all the same rating. I think it does, technically, because... Um, these can come out of A-tier chests, but they're not technically A-tier, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but yeah. Right, this is the best one. This is potentially the worst one. If not the worst one, then it's second best. How about Heart Synth? Heart Synth is A tier. So this is really... I'm putting this A tier because this is pretty good no matter... I mean, not no matter what. Because if you're stacking armor, like I said... Um, you're never going to get use out of this unless you get the Vampire. But you could totally get the Vampire. I just think this gives su it gives so much health that it's such a safety net. Even if you're pretty good and you're trying to streak... Um... I I still recommend taking this, even if you're, like, a Lich Streaker, because it gives you that, in case you lose all your armor, it gives you that, like, buffer. So, I don't think it's quite good enough for S tier, but this is a good one. It's definitely worth losing your Magnificence for. Heavy Boots. Oh my god, Heavy Boots are so good. Uh, are they A tier? Yeah, they're A tier. These are so good, man. Oh my god. Okay. The ability on Heavy Boots says um you you take no knockback which isn't that good the this ability does nothing if before advanced gungeons and dragons this would be like a d tier item cuz the ability does like nothing you you don't slide on ice i think and you like you don't get knocked back by you don't get knocked by like casey or alien engine or any stuff like that um, but after Advanced Gungeons and Dragons, this was given one of the best synergies in the game, which is Iron Stance. Iron Stance is ridiculous. It, the, some of the best guns in the game are shotguns, and this get, makes a lot of the shotguns just so much better. And a lot of the time, you'll be having a lot of these shotguns in a run, at least one or two. And it's a good, there's a good chance those shotguns will already be your best option, and it becomes even better. Plus, these have good synergies, like, with, uh... I believe this has a synergy with Big Iron. And maybe a couple other ones. This is a synergy item similar to Bionic Leg. Like, I don't think this is quite as good as Bionic Leg, because its ability does effectively nothing. Like, the knockback... Alien Engine with no knockback is not good, because of damage cap, for one. Like, that's not even an argument. Damage cap just makes that useless unless you're, like, burst firing it every couple seconds, which is how you would be using Alien Engine regardless if you didn't have heavy boots. You would just be shooting it, and then pause, and then shoot it again, and pause. But heavy boots does nothing. Let's get that out of the way. It just makes it more usable for room clear. And with KC, not moving forward is kind of nice. With Blasphemy, not moving forward is a bad thing. You want to be moving forward with Blasphemy because it gives you that extra mobility and makes you cover more area with your swipes to destroy more bullets. If I have Heavy Boots and I have Blasphemy, it makes Blasphemy very difficult to use because I lose that extra mobility where I'm covering more area, destroying more bullets. So yeah, the ability... None of this item's abilities do anything besides the synergies, but the synergies make it A tier. They're incredible. All right, Heavy Bullets. Yeah, I don't like heavy bolts. They increase your damage a bit. But they make your projectiles so slow that it's kind of hard to hit stuff a lot of the time. I don't think these are worth it a good amount of the time. Unless you have something that's like already 
that already has really fast projectile speed. Um, these are niche. They're sometimes useful. Usually I won't take them. Same with Helix bullets. Except Helix bullets are a little bit worse than this, because Helix bullets are almost always useless in room clear. It depends on the gun. These are usually... I mean, these are an upgrade for most boss clears, as long as you're not doing... As long as you're not doing too much damage. Because if you're doing a lot of damage, these just split your damage even more. And if you split your damage from doing like one per shot and to like 0.66 per shot, and you're already hitting damage cap, that's going to make you hit damage cap even harder. So you're going to be doing even less. So helix bolts are pretty bad, actually. I might even put these down here. I don't know. Yeah. These are... These kind of suck, dude. I don't know. They're pretty good with some guns, but just the, they're pretty much a downgrade with most, I feel like. Uh, wow. Why is this here? I mean... This is just a starter item. I don't know why this is here. I'm not even going to rank this. I mean... It's just the pilot starter. I consider this to be something with the pilot more than anything. I mean, if anything, you would just rate it the same as Ammo Belt, except worse, because... Ammo Belt has some synergies, and this doesn't. Um, yeah, won't even rank that. Alright. Ooh, Hip Holster. Okay. Hip Holster is good. This is, like, the good version of Backup Gun. This makes you shoot one shot every time you reload. This is quite good, actually. If you have glass cannon, this thing is insane. But even if you don't, just like with RPG or Stinger or stuff like that, it's really nice, actually. Especially for, like, room clear. And with Stinger or RPG for boss clear, it can be nice if you're not doing too much damage. I really like this. Just... Reliably being able to aim your shots instead of them just going behind you is super nice. Oh, holy grail. I think this goes A tier. I don't know if this is quite good enough to be S tier. But this is this item is insane. Every time you take damage, you get 50% of all your ammo back on all your guns. And I think it triggers like a blank effect, I guess. This has some decent synergies as well. It gives one curse when you pick it up. That's the thing. This isn't worth it in Hero Shrine, sadly. Because it gives the curse when you pick it up. And in Hero Shrine, you usually don't need ammo anyway, because you get so much. But yeah, in non-Hero Shrine, this is incredible, because you're probably ammo-starved, as is. And you want the curse. The little bit of curse is a good thing, usually. So yeah, this is an incredible item. Plus, it's D-tier. This is a really good D-tier unlock. If you haven't unlocked it already. I think you have to kill the advanced dragon to unlock this. So yeah. If you haven't unlocked this, definitely get it if you can. Because this is a really good thing to have in your D tier chests. Alright, homing bullets. These are C tier. Uh, I said this in crutch. The homing works differently. I can't remember exactly how it works differently, but... I remember this being worse. Enough said. All right, Honeycomb, our second F-tier item. Yes, let's go. There's not many useless items in Enter the Gungeon, but this is one of them. This thing is so bad. Oh my gosh, what is this? Okay, this has the exact same issue as the bum bullets, except 10 times worse. So much worse. Okay, if you get hit by in a room with one of those guys that grabs your bullets, he will grab one of your bees. Okay, so you'll throw out a bunch of bees. He'll grab the bees, throw them back at you, and then you'll get hit by those bees. And then it'll just repeat until either you're dead or you somehow kill him. And blanking the bees doesn't really work, I should mention. Like, that's not a solution. Sorry, just let me take a drink here. It's crazy. Plus, this has that downside, and it doesn't even have any upside like bum bullets, at least. Like, bum bullets at least at kind of increase your damage a little bit, other than that. These just do nothing. Those bees don't aren't those bees when you get hit aren't gonna help you at all. 
This item sucks. You should never pick this up, ever. Unless you're gonna sell it immediately. Or you're gonna sell it, or you think you're gonna sell it before you go to floor four. If you go to floor four and you still have this thing, you should drop it immediately. It's so bad. All right, hot lead. I like hot lead. I think I don't think it's A tier, but it's B tier. I mean, just random lighting stuff on fire randomly is just always a good thing. Unlike the frost bullets, where it's A tier, these are B tiers, so you're not nuking your build picking these up. And yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit of extra damage. It's just kind of nice. No reason not to grab these. Hungry bullets. This is tough. I don't like hungry bullets, personally. I'm gonna put these in B tier. This might be a little controversial, but... I feel like they're just not that good. Uh, with a lot of your guns, if hungry bullets are proccing too often, um, it's gonna make it hard to hit the boss. <laughs> Especially against, like... All complete bullet hell bosses like Wallmonger and stuff, or Dragon. It makes it very hard to hit the boss, because if your bullet is blue and it eats enemy bullets, it'll disappear before it hits the boss. Like, it's just eating your bullets, making you do less damage, where you could just be dodging the enemy's bullets and hitting them consistently, doing more damage. Plus, this is A tier, which is kind of... Eh. It's not the worst thing ever. It's definitely situational like if you're shooting a ton of bullets and you're able to break through the enemy's shots and stuff like that then it's okay but yeah typically i'd rather just not have these if i'm honest i bomb companion app yeah i mean pretty bad i'll put it in c tier actually because it has some kind of synergies with like um this if you choose to keep it the blank companion ring or like We'll talk about Ring of Triggers later. Where's Ring of Triggers? Here it is. We'll talk about this, don't worry. We'll get to this, but this is one of the things you would use Ring of Triggers with. <laughs> I'll say the one really good thing this does is if you use this on floor four, it blows up all the ice cubes and like the frozen penguins and stuff. Those count as bombs. So you can just, like, detonate them. Which is kind of nice. Um. Yeah, I don't know if that's good enough to put it in C tier. It's, like, being kind of useful on one floor. Usually you don't want to be keeping this unless you have a crazy synergy or something. Ice cube is really nice, actually. I'll put ice cube in A tier. This just makes your active items so much more reliable. Because it makes your active items cool down while they're active. So any invincibility active item you have, that, as long as you can shoot while you're using it. Um, which most of them you can, I think, right? I can't think of any you can't shoot while you're using, actually. That's just like an Isaac thing. <laughs> um, it just makes it so you can like use them almost infinitely, which is always good. I think this item's kind of boring. I don't like it. But it's definitely really powerful. It also increases your coolness a little bit, which is nice. But yeah. Nothing wrong with Ice Cube, it's just kind of boring. Ooh, I love this thing. Iron coin. So this gives... This is an active item that you can use three times. When you use it, it clears a random room on that floor. But it gives you passives while you're holding it. It makes shops cheaper. And it gives you coolness. This is one of the few like active items that gives you passive effects while you're holding it. Maybe the only one, actually. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. Maybe we'll pass some that I'm forgetting, but... Yeah, this is just a great thing to hold in your active slot unless you want to have something else. And the nice thing is you're always, if you're going to the rat, you're always going to get your cheese, the partially eaten cheese, but you're also always going to get the rat bag as long as you're winning the punch out and stuff. So once you get your cheese, which is like your guaranteed invincibility active, you don't even have to get rid of this because of the, the rat bag. It's just awesome. Definitely A tier. I'm always happy to see that. Alright, irradiated lead. Irradiated lead, I'm putting right next to hot lead, but this is better. Because this is kind of bugged with uh, the cop thing that I was talking about. The cop and, like, Phoenix up that I was mentioning. 
Um, this seems to make that one-shot bug happen more often. I don't know why. And I know, as far as I've seen, hot lead doesn't do it. But irradiated lead is just, like, bugged or something. I don't know. It's really weird. I can't explain it. I don't know why. Or if it's even... It might just be coincidence that I always have irradiated lead when it happens. Or usually do. But, yeah. It feels like this makes that bug happen more often. Which is kind of cool. Uh, a jar of bees. Jar of bees is okay. I'll put it in C tier. Again, this doesn't have the issue of the bumblets or the honeycomb because you choose when to throw the bees. Similar to the stinger and the honeycomb. So this is just extra damage when you want it. Nothing wrong with it. Alright. Jetpack, I will put in... I love jetpack. I love jetpack. I think it's C tier, though. It's not that good. Like, getting two extra move speed is nice, but losing the ability to roll is so bad. I will say, though, if you have jetpack while you have another form of flight, like Wax Wings or this, the Cat Throne, you actually can roll while you have it active. So it, it just takes your active slot and is plus two speed, which is nice. Um, if you don't have any other actives that you really want. It, it's just two speed, which is awesome. But yeah... I don't know. It takes the active slot. It's two speed for losing the ability to dodge roll. So you have to like, if you know you're going to need to roll, you have to turn it off and then roll and then turn it back on or just like kind of weave in and out quickly. It's very difficult to use. It's definitely really good if you know how to use it, but it's just, I wouldn't even say it's worth learning how to use. <laughs> I love this thing, but it's not that good. Junk. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot to say with junk. It's just, like, a nice reward to get from chests when you junk them. Usually you want to get junk rather than health, unless you really are struggling for health. You can sell this for a little bit of money if you want. If you're playing the robot, it gives you passive damage. If you get Sir Junkin, it'll buff him up. Or, are these lies, actually? Wait, wait a second. This is junk, right? What did we just rate? Jetpack, yeah. This is junk. Where are lies? Wait a minute. Lies aren't even on here. Oh my goodness. They didn't put lies. What? Alright. Change of plan. Let's pretend these are lies. Alright, there you go. <laughs> You always want to get lies, in my opinion. Albert's chest sucks. Um, so getting, in my opinion, Albert's chest can be good. It can give you like two drops, but a lot of the time it'll give you like five casings or like half a heart or something like that. It's inconsistent enough that I would rather have the chance of getting Betrayer's lies, which is an incredibly good synergy. If you have lies plus Betrayer's shield, it gives Betrayer's shield infinite ammo, really fast fire rate, Bigger clip capacity, I think. And I believe it makes the shield stronger. But yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. It, it's just a game-winning synergy that you can get every single time you get Betrayer's Shield as long as you're always getting lies. So yeah. We'll pretend these we'll pretend this is lies instead of junk. Going in A tier. Katana bullets! These suck. Why why do these exist? Why? So this is one of the This is one of a few poorly implemented items in a farewell to arms. I think the only problem with katana bullets is the poor implementation. These shouldn't be able to push the player. That's the big issue with katana bullets. The fact that they can push the player is very bad. But uh, I say that, but then again, if you're playing <laughs> if you're playing Hero Shrine runs, a lot of the time Katana bullets will push enemies, like slimes especially, just directly into you. They'll just launch them in your face. Like, a lot of the time. So, if you're taking these, you're actively hurting yourself, because it'll push you around, and it'll push enemies into you, while not even doing that much. Like, it does some damage. And it gives curse, which is bad for your shrine, good for non hero shrine. Overall, you should just never pick these up. Honestly. They're just gonna hurt you. Push enemies into you if you're playing Hero Shrine. Probably push you into pits or something like that. These just suck. 
And it's only because of poor implementation, in my, in my opinion. Terrible item. Alright, knife shield? Uh... I like knife shield. It's not that good, though. It's usually not worth... Like, if you happen to get it, it's not that bad. Like, you just put the knives around you and they can block shots sometimes, but... If you get any other active item, you usually want to get rid of this. <laughs> like... They just don't do that much. You can also, like, use the knife shield again to shoot the knives out, I believe, but... Eh. Definitely not worth. Lament. Oh, I love Lament. It's not that good, though. But at the same time, I'll put it in A tier. I love Lament. This is one of my favorite active items. I literally never use it because it's pretty much not worth it in Hero Shrine runs. Because when you get an item from it, it has a chance of damaging you, and it's giving you curse when you're holding it, and it's giving you guns that curse you when you hold them. Just all that combined in Hero Shrine makes it not really worth, but in non-Hero Shrine, it's usually worth it. So there's a couple of cool things you can do with Lament. The main thing being, if you have a room with a little platform that's surrounded by pits, you jump on the platform, use Lament, and then immediately jump off before the enemies spawn. All those enemies will spawn on the surface that you used Lament on. So you can immediately just like, you can kill them while they're just standing there all together, or if you have any kind of explosive or like knockback weapon, you just, like an RPG, you just shoot the RPG at them, they'll all fall in the pit and die instantly with one RPG shot. Whereas normal, like if you don't do that, you have to fight them all normally while they're running around in the room. It's just a mess. So if you know that tech, it, it becomes a lot better. It's a lot less annoying to use because you're not, you're pretty much guaranteed not going to take damage from the enemy. You're only going to take damage from Lament itself. Lament's damage can stack infinitely, by the way. If you use Lament enough and it damages you enough, Every time it damages you, it does plus one damage. Um, luckily, armor can tank infinite damage. Like, if you have any amount of armor, no matter how much damage Lament does to you, it, the armor will tank all the, all the damage. But if you have only health left and you've used Lament a bunch and you've lost all your armor, be really careful because Lament can literally bring you from, like, eight hearts to zero in one hit. It'll k instantly kill you. If you're not careful. So, be really careful with that. But yeah, this can give you some good stuff. If you're willing to take the curse and all that. But yeah. Not really worth in Hero Shrine, but really, really strong in non-Hero Shrine. You can also buy this from the Key Merchant, which is cool. I believe it costs two keys. Ooh, this is a good one. Laser Sight. This is a C-tier item that increases your accuracy by a bunch. And... Accuracy is great, for the same reason we talked about with, uh, the battery bullets. But, this also gives Pistol Machine, which is an incredible, like, that's a synergy, that's one of the premier synergies that I've talked about a million times in these tier lists. Pistol Machine is game winning, so if you get, if you see this and you have low synergy factor, or low, you have maximum synergy factor, I mean, you have no synergies you're way more likely to get Machine Pistol. So yeah, just really good passive effect and really good synergy. All right. This item is so boring. Oh my gosh. This item gets so old so fast, but it's like, you can't not put it in S tier. It's probably one of the best items in the game. Like, ah. I hate this item. It's so boring. The whole point of Gungeon is like to build up with what you have and like use your build the most effectively with what synergies you have and like kind of aim for certain synergies with your synergy factor if you want but this just like this ruins everything like oh i have i have every synergy now great and it's just boring i don't know it's just a boring instant win item i don't like it but it is s tier all right litchy trigger finger litchy trigger finger is tough to rate because, in fact, let's not put it in C tier yet. I'll probably end up putting it in C tier, but it might get bumped up to B tier if I can talk myself into it. Lichy Trigger Finger is a D tier act or not active item, passive item that increases your fire rate by like uh, fifteen percent, I believe. I'm not sure about that. So, like we talked about with this, shooting faster is not 
a good thing. Usually. But Lichy Trigger Finger is cheap enough that it's a lot of the time honestly worth it because it's not like a huge... Yeah, it's not a huge investment. You're not wasting a lot more ammo on your really heavy hitting guns and it makes your starter gun quite a bit better. Oh yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention with this by the way. A big problem with... Oh, man, I wish I had mentioned this when I talked about the Potion of Gun Friendship. A big problem with Potion of Gun Friendship is the knockback it adds. I really wish I talked about this. The reason why you don't want to even use Potion of Gun Friendship with your starter gun in room clear is because of the knockback. If Potion of Gun Friendship had no knockback increase, it would at least be useful to use in room clear with your starter gun. But the knockback makes it so you can't kill anything because you just miss several. You miss all your shots because the enemies are getting knocked back all over the place. If this did not knock back, it would at least be useful in that case where you want to use your starter as your room clear. But no! It's so bad. So yeah. I apologize that I didn't mention that aspect of it, but that, that's a very important part of it and why this is so bad for everything. Anyway, back to this. This is, I mean, all fire rate increases are gonna shine the most with your starter gun because it has infinite ammo. Like, having infinite ammo just means you're not wasting any extra ammo by shooting faster. So, missing more and shoot, like, using more ammo doesn't matter because you have infinite. It's just more damage, which is good. So, overall, I would say this is probably worth buying, especially early on. But fire rate is generally not a great stat to have for a, all, most for a lot of your guns. And weirdly enough, this having a low fire rate increase makes it better than if it had like a big fire rate increase. Because if you had a big fire rate increase, you'd have to worry about how you're using all your other guns a lot more, which we will talk about when we get to platinum bullets. All right, Liquid Valkyrie. I'm gonna put right next to uh bloody eye except this is a tier this is a tier but i think it makes bullets even slower like kind of the same thing it's nice it's cool it makes bullets really slow but i don't know i don't like it i'll usually take it but i don't really enjoy having it it's pretty mad the cape we're not gonna rate this Uh, just because there's no way to obtain it in-game besides playing the bullet. So it doesn't really matter where it is. Oh, Lodestone Amulet. Okay, this thing is so underrated. It's so underrated. I don't know why people don't realize this thing is incredible. Okay, so what this does is on the item description, it says knockback increased or something like that. Or like blank knockback up. That's not... I wish they would update the description for this, because it stuns enemies as well, which is great. Like, that's a good blank effect. It stuns enemies briefly. But the... Re okay, that's not even the good part of it. The really good part of this item is the fact that it's a D-tier amulet. It could have no effect whatsoever, and just the fact that it's a D-tier amulet makes it incredible. It's such a cheap way to get the blank every single floor. This is A tier. This is right up there with Gold Amulet. Not quite as good, but the cost... Like, the cost for how much value this gives you across the rest of the run, for how many blanks it gives you, is just incredible. This thing is so good because it's in the D tier. Really an underrated aspect of this thing. All right. Loot bag, definitely A tier. This thing gives you insane amounts of money. In exchange for you drop money whenever you take damage. But the money is on the ground in like a circle around where you got damaged. So you can, if you, <laughs> if you know you're not going to get damaged again by running around to get the money, you can like grab it really quick. Or if you drop a 50, a 50 bomb golden casing, you can grab that really quickly. But, I mean, yeah, 
the downside really doesn't compare to the upside. The upside just outweighs the downside massively, unless you're constantly, constantly taking damage, I suppose. And then, yeah, of course, it synergizes with this as well. One thing I should mention with these three payday items is the payday items give weight to the other payday items when you have them. Like, if you get loot bag, you're much, much, much more likely to get these. Like, five times more likely, I believe it was. I used to have the numbers, but I don't anymore. It's a lot more likely. So, yeah, really, really good. Macho Brace sucks. Why, why does this thing exist? You dodge roll, and you get, like, 33 or 30% more damage for your next shot. Like, okay. Why? <laughs> this isn't... This does nothing. Like, if you get it from a chest, you might as well take it, I guess. But it's... You would never buy it. It doesn't do anything. This item just does nothing. I will say the one thing this item does that hurts you is if you have 10 curse and you go to the next floor and you're the way that lord of the jammed works is <laughs> you'll see what i'm getting at here the way lord of the jammed works is when you enter a floor when you're over 10 curse lord of the jam doesn't spawn until you do certain actions like change guns pick up ammo pick up an item drop an item uh, if you get hit while you have glass guan stones, you lose the glass guan stones and then he spawns. Or some stuff like if you flip a table with table tech rage, it, it it activates the rage and then that spawns Lord of the Jammed. If you dodge roll while you have Macho Brace, it will spawn Lord of the Jammed. So if you have 10 curse and you have this, you should drop it immediately. <laughs> because you can't keep Lord of the Jammed from spawning at the beginning of a floor for like a good amount of time. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind with this thing. If you have 10 curse, just drop this immediately, please. It's terrible. All right. Uh, this active item, yeah, I'll try to kind of speed through these. This has been taking a while. I'll, I'll try to keep these brief if they're simple items. This gives you infinite ammo when you stand in the radius. It's an active item. It's pretty good. It's kind of niche. If you have something like Yari Launcher or Makeshift Cannon, it's obviously insane. But other than that, it's just kind of like a good way to save some ammo. If you want to use it in rooms or against bosses, especially. So, yeah, pretty good. Magic Bullets, I don't like Magic Bullets at all. Turning stuff into chickens, especially in Hero Shrine, is bad. Because chickens tank a lot of shots. They're hard to kill unless you dodge roll or walk into them. Um, you have to dodge roll into the chicken if it's jammed. And jammed chickens are just like immortal. The amount of shots it takes to kill a jammed chicken is ridiculous. And it can walk into you and damage you. So, typically I don't like turning stuff into chickens. Especially very randomly. I'd rather just kill them. So, C tier. Magic Sweet is... Uh, I'm not going to say this is S tier. I don't think this is quite good enough that you win. But this is one of the best in A tier. If A tier were ranked, this would be uh, probably at the top. This gives move speed and damage, and I believe it gives a heart container as well. One or two. Uh, just, like, incredibly good stat upgrade. In the A tier. Yeah, I don't think the damage is quite enough to go in S tier, and it doesn't have any, like, synergies, so... Map. Map is nice. I like map. It shows you the layout of the floor, including where the secret room is. The really good part about map is it has a synergy with Origunny that makes Origunny shoot twice as many shots. Um, every time you shoot, it'll shoot two instead of one. Really good. Double damage Origunny. And this is usually pretty cheap, so if you have Origunny, you should always buy it. And if you have a bunch of money and you see a map, you can buy it just in case you get Origunny later. Because the good thing is, map only works on the floor you buy it on. But if you had map previously in the run, no matter when you get Origunny afterwards, Origunny will still get the synergy. You do not have to have map and Origunny at the same time. So, pretty good. It's always really cheap. And you get this a lot of time from mini bosses, which is nice for free. So yeah, good item. Uh, this is A tier. I don't know if this is quite good enough to be S tier. Because it doesn't have the benefits that like Drill has, where you get more money and you get weight for getting these. And you have the synergy with the Clown Mask. 
But, I mean, this this effectively makes so you don't have to open... You don't have to junk any more chests for the rest of the run. You get so many keys. Really, really good. Um, in fact, maybe I'll just rate Shelaton Key right now. I'll wait. I'll wait on Shelaton Key, but... Yeah, I'll explain Shelaton Key when we get there. Alright, the Master Rounds? I mean, ugh. Where do we put the master rounds? A tier, I suppose. Master rounds are very important to get because they do more than just giving you health upgrades. They give you heart magnificence, like I talked about before, where you want heart magnificence. Um, if you're getting these, you're less likely to get these heart containers. Or where did I put the heart containers? you're less likely to get these, which means you're getting more loot overall. These aren't wasting your chest slots with, like, useless garbage. And they synergize with, uh... with Chamber Gun. So, like, if we had to order these, it would go like this. Where this... Well... Nah, this is the best one. Well... Yeah, I would say Chamber 5 is the best. This is the best form of Chamber Gun. Second best... Uh, third best, I guess. But these last three don't matter. They're all pretty bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, free hard containers, free money if you're playing robot. They make it so you don't get other hard containers as often. Synergizes with chamber gun. And if you're getting the chamber, if you're getting the master rounds, you have synergy factor with the chamber gun. So if you're getting these and you're keeping your synergy factor... Like, you're not picking up useless synergies. You're making it more likely that you'll see Chamber Gun, which is really nice. Alright, Medkit. I think Medkit's solid. This has good synergies, like with Flare Gun. And it, it just heals you so much. It heals you, what, like, four hearts? Four or five, maybe? I don't even know how many hearts this heals. It's just nice insurance, I guess. Pretty good. Melted Rock. Yeah, this will just go same with... Uh, I bomb companion app. Except this is even worse. You explode dead bodies, which is like kinda okay sometimes. Like you might as well explode them, but they're usually gonna do like no damage, so. Uh, I'm getting a question. Isn't the bullet health synergy with the best of the chamber gun? Well, as you can see, there's no master round in bullet hell. So. The best chamber gun synergies don't have master rounds. The best ones are it goes Hell, and then it goes Abbey, and then it goes Floor 5, and then it goes Oubliette. But none of those have master rounds, so it's not worth talking about. Metronome. Metronome is A tier, for sure. I don't think this is quite game winning by itself, but this is just always great. Um Yeah, you just you don't take damage, you deal more damage. You, of course, I, I'm pretty sure this is pretty common knowledge. If you want to change guns without losing your metronome buff, you drop the metronome, change guns, and then pick it back up. And you don't lose the metronome buff. That makes this item a lot better. But yeah. How much to talk about there? Military training. This is... I'm only putting military training in C tier. Because it's just... It's a... Uh, Galactic Medal of Valor, but worse. Like... It makes you shoot a tiny bit faster, it makes you reload a tiny bit faster, it makes you a tiny bit more accurate. The stat-ups are just really low. Like, if you have money, you might as well buy it, but it's not very impactful. It's nice that the Marine starts with it. But yeah, it's not it's not insanely impactful. Oh my god, this is S tier. Ring of Mimic or Mimic Tooth Necklace. Sorry, not Ring of Mimic anything. Mimic Tooth Necklace. This is so good. This makes everything a mimic including pedestals so the reason this is so good is because this makes it so you don't need keys for anything anymore all your chests are free and you get twice amount of twice the amount of loot from every single boss pedestal because a boss or a pedestal mimic gives two drops instead of one this thing is insane you can get all of these benefits for two keys from the key merchant two keys crazy good crazy good. Alright, Molotov? Yeah, Molotov's pretty bad. 
I mean, it's fine early game, but it falls off so quick. You almost always want to replace this quickly. Not much to talk about. Monster Blood. Monster Blood is good synergies. This is also a really cheap heart container. And this has the heart magnificence benefit where you buy this and you increase your heart magnificence so you're less likely to get other heart containers. Um, yeah, sorry, let me... If I can finish the rest of this and then I can explain some of my takes on here again. Um, if anyone has any questions. Yeah, Monster Blood, I'd say, is A tier. It's che It's really cheap. It gives poison resistance. It has good synergies like Venom Veins. Um, I'm, I think it's Goopton that sells this. Usually if Goopton is selling this, I'll buy it. Yeah, Monster Blood is great. Er, mo yeah, Monster Blood. <laughs> I was about to say Venom Veins, but yeah. Monster Blood is awesome. Uh, the pill. The muscle relaxant. I mean, this is just a really good accuracy upgrade. This has some good synergies with the sniper rifles too, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, just it's just accuracy. It, this is B tier, so it's a little bit expensive, but I think it's worth it for the accuracy if you see it. All right, mustache. I'll put mustache C tier. This is like sometimes good, but usually you just don't need the healing. If you do need the healing, it can save you. I mean, if you're trying to buy a heart or half a heart and you need the health, it'll give you uh, a full heart instead of half a heart, which is super awesome. But yeah. Um, there's not many synergies with this either. I think this might have a synergy with, like, Brick Breaker, but I don't think any of the synergies are worth talking about. Nano Machines are S tier. Nano Machines are so good. It is so hard to die with Nano Machines, man. Every, like, is it every third hit you take, you get one armor? That's ridiculous. Ridiculous! It is so hard to die with this item. You get so much armor. It's crazy. Plus, this has some insanely good synergies, including Pistol Machine, again. Pistol Machine just has so many synergies with so many good items, and this is another one of them. So good. All right. Uh, this thing. <laughs> what is this even called? Oh, God, I can't remember what this is called. It's... Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's like better Molotov, I guess. This is not Airstrike. This is, uh... Napalm Strike. This is Napalm Strike. Airstrike is, uh, up here somewhere. Right here. Yeah, this is Napalm Strike. That's what it is. Yeah, Napalm Strike is pretty bad. I mean... You just shoot a line of fire, and... Yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Oh, this... Ah, dude. Okay. I put Magic Sweet in A tier, but I, I think this is good enough for S tier. This thing is crazy. Number two. Oh my god. When I see this... When I get this from an, a red chest, I'm just so happy. This is like one of the best passives you can get from a red chest. It's so good. It gives two move speed. A ton of damage. Like, the damage multiplier on this is crazy. I can't remember how much it is. But, oh my god. Number two is insane. This is sadly an unlock that not a lot of people have because I don't think this is required for um, finished gun. So a lot of people kind of neglect unlocking this actually because it requires you to play co-op. But this is worth unlocking. This is one of the best A tier passives. So good. It gives you so much damage. It's awesome. All right, oiled cylinder. I love Oiled Cylinder. Um, I don't know if it quite goes A tier. Probably B tier. I would say. Um, I mean, reloading faster is always really nice. It increases your DPS a bit. But it's not just increasing your fire rate. It's increasing your fire rate, but it's keeping that, like, gap... For damage cap to reset it's just it's just making that gap a little shorter this is especially good with your starter gun though i mean making your starter guns reload faster is amazing um this has a really good synergy with wind up gun where it makes wind up guns if the entire wind up gun clip do full damage but yeah i don't think this is quite good enough for a tier but i do really like this item all right um 
the flask. I'll put the flask in C tier. I mean, it's just, like, it's just health per floor if you need it. But usually, I mean, <laughs> come on. Who's going to use this thing? You would have to be desperate to survive on health to keep this around because this takes your active slot. Like, usually you'd want to keep anything else, like potion of lead skin or anything else just to stay alive. That's usually going to be better than this. And this is also A tier, so you're increasing your magnificence for it. Not great. Omega Bullet. Omega Bullet's not nearly as good as Alpha Bullet. I'm actually going to put it in B tier. Because... Increasing the damage of your last shot per clip versus your first shot per clip, like, it's such a big difference. Your first shot is going to be happening so much more often than your last shot. Because you would have to, like, never reload to always have your last shot hit. Um, the difference doesn't matter if it's, like, glass cannon or stuff like that, but honestly, just because of the difference between every other gun, yeah, we'll keep Alpha Bolt up here. Orange Guanstone. I like Orange Guanstone. This thing got a big buff. It used to shoot so slow. Now it shoots decently quickly. And it has Orange or Guanstone with, like, Emula the Pit Lord and plus one bullets. Where are plus one bullets, by the way? Huh. I don't know if this has plus one bullets. What the heck? All right, we'll just pretend this is plus one bullets when we get to the end, I suppose. But yeah, plus one bullets. That's that's an important item. That has some good synergies. Anyway. Yeah. This may orange or guanstone shoots so fast. It it's really nice actually. Usually I don't like uh familiar damage, but it's just so consistent and the projectile speed is nice. Like one problem with Super Space Turtle is the projectile speed is really slow, so it's bad at hitting stuff. But this thing, it can at least hit stuff, so it's really good for room clear. And it's not going to hurt your boss clear too much with damage cap. Orbital bullets are F tier. Never, ever, ever take these. They do nothing. All they do is, like, destroy your chests and stuff. These actually do nothing. They are so bad. This is another poorly imp implemented item in a Farewell to Arms. This is an A tier passive, so you're nuking your Magnificence by taking it. For an item that does nothing except, like, destroy your chests when you have orbitals around you. Like, this item just sucks. Definitely F tier. It's funny to look at, but yeah. Uh, Owl? I'll put Owl B tier. I like Owl. It's not as good as, like, the blank guy from the clown mask or anything, but having random blanks can be really good. It has, of course, has an insane synergy with Golden Amulet, where every time it mini blanks, it, that will only has mini blanks, by the way, just like the blank guy. Um, whenever that will mini blanks, everything in the room takes 100 damage. There is another bugged synergy with Owl, where uh, it's with like Owl and I think Mailbox might be one of them. The Witch Pistol is probably another. Hex Gun, I think. Yeah, Hex Gun is one of them. Where the Owl turns into a Skeleton Owl. That is bugged, actually. <laughs> what you can do is you can set your hot switch on your gun menu up to switch between, like, Hexagon and any other gun. And then you just mash the hot switch button. And the Owl will transform from the Skeleton Owl to the regular Owl every time you switch guns. And every time you switch guns, it'll reset the owl's blank cooldown. So any bullet that comes near you, the owl will mini blank. And it just spams a bajillion mini blanks. So if you have golden amulet plus that, you just, you literally, as soon as anything is near you, you just nuke the entire room. It's so broken. It makes you invincible effectively as well, which is nice, but yeah. Owls pretty fine. It's S tier, so it's a really, really expensive familiar. But if you have the money, it's usually worth it. Alright. Partially eaten cheese, I mean, come on. This is the best invincibility active. One of the best parts about it is you get it from the rat, so you can get it literally every single run. But yeah, even ignoring the fact that you get it literally every run, it's just the best one. It has... It's tied for the best um, duration, I believe, with, like, Stuffed Star. It gives you Flight, which is awesome. 
It makes you instantly kill anything you touch, which is cool. You can still shoot, of course, while you're using it. Like, and if you run into boss with it, you do a little bit of damage, which is cool. Uh, you just want to be careful to not use the transformation with, like, contact immunity. Because if you have contact immunity, what that does is it makes you bounce off of enemies when you touch them. And that includes with the cheese. So when you try to eat an enemy, you kill it, but you, like, bounce off of it. So it's harder to, like, just run through a group of enemies and eat all of them. So if you have contact immunity, like, Blast Helmet or, like, Armor of Thorns, you should probably drop it. If you want to be using this for your room clear, but yeah. Enough said. Insanely good. Pig? Pig is A tier. It's an extra life. It's the same thing as clone, where... I don't like it, it's kind of boring. But you take it for safety, like, it's a no-brainer. This revives you when you die. And I almost like this better than clone, because clone, if I happen to die with clone, I go back to the beginning of the run, which... If I don't feel like doing a really OP run, I just want to finish. It's really annoying because I have to get all the way back. Where with Pig, I can just keep going. But if I die either way, I'm probably going to be in a bad situation. But yeah. I mean, it's just a nice safety net. You're almost never going to use this if you know how to play. But you should always take this regardless in case you die. Pink Guanstone. I mean, I'm literally just going to put it with these hard containers. It's... It, it just gives you a heart in an orbital. The orbital, of course, doesn't do a whole lot by itself. Yeah, it's useful. You might as well pick it up, but yeah. Alright, oh my god. Alright, this might be the most scorching hot take in the whole tier list. You ready for this? And yeah, we, we take synergies into account if they're important. If a synergy is, like, common enough. Like, this has... Pistol Machine, this is Pistol Machine. Um, this is good synergies and it's just OP. If it's relevant. If it's like a really rare niche synergy, then I don't take it into account. Alright, here we go. This thing sucks. It's not good. It's not good. I repeat. This is not a good item. It's not. It increases your attack speed by too much. You hit damage cap like instantly. Literally, if this thing only had damage, didn't have fire rate, it would be 10 times better. But because you have to actively think about how you're using your ammo when you use this thing, most people just waste all of their ammo for nothing when they use this thing because it makes them shoot so fast and do nothing. If you're using this in room clear and just holding down the fire button, you're wasting all your ammo, missing all your shots. And if you're holding down the fire button against a boss, you're just hitting damage cap instantly, wasting all your ammo. This thing just is an ammo dump. It's crazy. Having this much fire rate is not good like 99% of the time. There's a couple instances where it's good. If you have like stone dome or something with that crazy amount of ammo that the shoots pretty slow then with those guns, it can be pretty decent. Or like, the armor gun. I can't remember what it's called. The armor gun that has 300 rounds and you, it's stronger if you have armor. If you have that with platinum bullets, that's also pretty good. But like, it's just, it's just not good, man. Fire rate is not a good stat to have. Same with this, like, it's the same story. You're just wasting your ammo for nothing. Such a bad item, man. Take away the fire rate on this. Give it just damage. It would be fine. It would definitely be bad. Not a good item. This probably belongs in B tier. But I'm just putting it in C tier because I, I don't care. This thing is so overrated. Alright. Uh, Poison Vial. It's a diffuser. Which is kind of nice. I mean, where did I put Cool and Leak? Actually, I put Coolant Leak in C tier. I'll put this in C tier too. They're both diffusers. This has better room clear potential because it, it poisons stuff in such a huge radius. But I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's mostly just like a diffuser you get rid of as soon as you have a gun that diffuses and that kind of thing. How much is it? Uh, table tech, whatever. Oh, where was Deroma? Uh, portable table device. Portable table device is great. I don't know if it's quite A tier. Probably B tier. But this thing is crazy. 
The tables are kind of small, but they're really tanky. And when a table dies, it destroys bullets in a gigantic radius around itself. During, sorry, during the uh, dragon phase two. I don't think it does that all the time. But yeah, if you have this, it makes dragon phase two. Just like, you just put down tables and they just explode and destroy all the bullets around it. I don't know if that's a bug or what. But otherwise, it's just really nice. I mean, this lets you utilize the mechanic where if you flip a table into bullets, like, the moment you flip a table, there's a small radius around the table where bullets are destroyed. A bigger radius than the table would actually absorb. And the bullets deal no damage to the table at that moment. It's, like, invincible. And you can utilize that pretty well. Like, I love using this thing against Rat Phase 1. I love using this thing against the tank because if you put tables right in the tank's um, pathing, the tank will just run into the tables and not be able to move, which is really funny. I mean, they'll get destroyed pretty quick, but yeah, I think this is good. Plus, it has the it has all the table tech synergies that you would have. Like if it's, if you have table tech money, um, rage, rage is a really good one. Blank is a good one. Uh, Rocket can be an okay one if you're using it during bosses. It's kind of nice. Shotgun, it's pretty niche. Stun is always great, but yeah. Those table tech synergies make it nice. I like those. I like this active. Alright, turret. I love turret. I don't think it's good enough to be A tier, but turret is one of my favorite active items. You just plop this thing down, it has low cooldown, and it just shoots so fast. Like, it just kills stuff. So efficiently. And it's always nice to have. Like, especially the low cooldown makes it so useful on room clear. I love turret. Alright. Potion of Lead Skin. I mean, this item is so boring, <laughs> but it's so good. This is just like your basic invincibility active. It has a short duration, kind of long cooldown, but it's a low tier. It's like D tier, I think, so it's pretty cheap if you want to buy it from the shop. And any bullets that you walk into are reflected. Like, it's just really good. This is the kind of thing you would use during bosses to no-hit them uh, consistently. Really boring. I never use this thing. So I, at this point, I typically try to avoid the invincibility active items. Besides, I'll use cheese to kill those like inflating slimes because they take too long to kill otherwise. But other than that, I try to avoid them. But yeah, this is definitely a really good active. All right, uh, R two D two. Does this go in F tier? Nah, I'll put it in D tier. It's not quite bad enough to go in F tier, but. This thing is so bad. <laughs> this is the worst familiar in the game. R2-D2. Why did they make... Oh my god, why is this S tier? Why? It's like worse than Super Space Turtle, dude. Oh my god. I don't... I don't understand it. It's worse than Baby Good Shelton, and Baby Good Shelton sucks. I... Make this B tier, at least. Even C tier, maybe. Because it's worse than Super... Like, oh my god. R R2G tier needs some justice, man. This thing sucks. Alright, Rat Boots are S tier. I mean, the big reason they're S tier is because they're guaranteed every single run. These are a crutch item, though. Okay. Some of the rat items are crutch items, I will say. And is the where's the rat bag? The rat bag... I'll just rate this as well. This goes S tier 2. I'll just rate these together. These two are crutch items because you get them every single run. If you're getting the rat boots every single run, you'll get used to running over the pits in the forge and hell. Um, which means if somehow there's a run where you don't have the rat boots for some reason, like you miss the rat for whatever reason, somehow, which is really rare, that shouldn't happen, but... So you can screw up and, like, not have enough blanks or whatever. Um, on that run, you'll probably run into the pits a lot. <laughs> it's what I've found. Especially if you're doing, like, hundreds, even thousands of runs, like me, with the rat boots. If you get one run where you accidentally don't have them, you are just walking in those pits over and over and over because you don't realize. And the rat bag is even worse. The rat bag, one of the reasons it's amazing 
is because when you roll next to bullets, you suck them into your ra your sack. But them going in your sack is not the good part. It's the sucking them up that's the good part. There's a there's a pretty large radius around your body. Like not it, that's not huge, but it's big enough to be really really effective. There's that radius where you're sucking up bullets. So your dodge rolls are instantly like 10 times safer. Where you could roll into a bullet that would have hit you and you'll just suck it up and not take any damage. So if you get used to that, especially against like the Lich, um, you'll roll into bullets expecting them to get sucked up and not take damage and you'll just take damage. Like these are crutch items, but they're insanely good because you get them every single run. So good. All right, Ration. Ration is C tier. It heals you for two hearts. If you're holding it and you die, it'll revive, it'll like heal you instead of you dying, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, I mean, you just use it and get two hearts. Pretty useful. All right, Red Guanstone. I don't like Red Guanstone. I don't like stuff that speeds up your dodge roll in general. That's why this is here as well. Like, if you like stuff that speeds up your dodge roll, you can definitely put it in, like, B, probably. But I'm just so used to the regular dodge roll that at this time, speeding it up kind of messes me up a lot more than it helps me, I feel like. So, typically, like, I'll, I'll usually still take these, but I do notice it messes me up sometimes where I wouldn't have messed up otherwise. So, yeah. I don't love them, but... I don't hate them enough that I won't take them. All right, reload stone. This thing is not that good. I'll put it in B tier. Well, yeah, I'll put it in B tier with the uh, oiled cylinder. It's kind of a worse version of oiled cylinder. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Because this takes your active slot, it increases your magnificence, and it makes you reload faster. <laughs> Using this active as like an invincibility active is so crappy because the duration is so short. It lasts for like only a few seconds. It's so bad. And it it makes it so you you suck up bullets and then the bullets that you suck up are added to your ammo count on your gun. Which most guns have no benefit from that because they have too much ammo. Like if you have a, anything that has like 300 or more ammo that's not gonna do anything basically and the cooldown is quite long on it too like this as an active item is horrible but the 50 percent reload speed decrease is or increase is pretty nice that's the only reason it's in b tier if it didn't have that i would put it in like c tier or even d tier so bad all right uh, remote bullets, I'll put in B tier. These were, okay, These. this is like the one item where I will accept the keyboard versus controller argument. A lot of people try to say like, oh my gosh, bloody scarf is so bad on, key on controller, but so good on keyboard. No, it's good on both. I play controller. I've played controller for almost 3,000 hours, and I will tell you this is a game-winning item. But, yeah, this is an item where I will accept that argument. It, these are significantly worse if you're playing controller. Just because it's so much harder to hit your shots. And, yeah. This gives a little bit of damage up. Makes all your bullets completely accurate, but you control them. Pretty annoying on controller, but just incredible on keyboard mouse. So we'll just put that in B tier. Alright, Riddle of Lead. I mean, come on. Riddle of Lead is awesome. Gives hard containers. Gives damage. I think it gives a little bit of fire rate, which is fine. It gives movement speed. This is just like the S tier stat up. Riddle of Lead is great. It gives so many stats. Alright. Ring of Chest Friendship. This thing is so good. Oh my god, this thing is so good. Maybe it doesn't belong S tier, though. I don't know. This thing just makes it so you have no keys that go... Like, if you have any keys, they will get used, most likely. And be, even if you have no keys, being able to junk the chests can be pretty useful. 
This is one of the few items that can make Junkin, like, kind of good, actually. <laughs> we'll get to Junkin, uh, kind of soon. But, yeah, if you have this, it's really easy to get a bunch of junk. Which is never a bad thing. I, this could go A tier, but I like this so much. You can buy this for one key from the key merchant. It's so good. This is always worth buying. Alright, Ring of Chest Vampirism. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty bad. The best thing about this is it gives the blade synergy with the Cruller Glaive. But, like, even then, it's kind of a niche synergy. This doesn't really do anything. I will say, it's kind of nice that you heal from killing Mimics as well. But the healing usually just... If you're completely desperate for health, dying, it can be nice. But other than that, it just does nothing. Uh, Ring of Ethereal Form. Definitely A tier. This is a really good one. This is uh, Invincibility Active and a Stealing Active all in one. Which is really good. That's why it's above these other Stealing Actives. Um, in fact, maybe this should... Should Lead Skin go down? I feel like Lead Skin is good enough to be in the A tier. But yeah, this is this is really good. It has good duration. The cooldown is pretty long, but being able to steal and have invincibility with the same active is pretty nice. Alright, Ring of Fire Resistance. I mean, like... It's fine. Fire Resistance is kind of nice. I believe... Doesn't this give... Uh, does this give Queen Gungeon? I remember this gives a good synergy. It's either Queen Gungeon or it's, uh... Phoenix up. I can't remember which, but yeah, I mean... If you get this, it's fine, but... Usually not worth going out of your way to get it. Alright, here we go. Ring of uh, Mimic Friendship. This is the worst item in the game. This is the worst one. By far. By a mile. Nothing comes close to being as bad as this. Why does this item exist? <laughs> it's so bad. This just... It makes it so you get no mimics. Why would you want that? <laughs> mimics are just free keys, free chests, free loot from pedestals, free loot from wall mimics. You can buy this from the key merchant for one key. Bro, I wouldn't give him five keys for this thing. Or no, I wouldn't let him give me five keys to hold this thing. This thing sucks so bad okay and uh, here's an argument i like i love hearing i'm just kidding i hate hearing this argument uh people will say oh if you have mimic tooth necklace plus uh plus if you have mimic tooth necklace plus ring of mimic friendship then you just get all the free unlocked chests no that it's not good still, because you still don't get any pedestal mimics. You're losing out on a drop every single boss. It's not good. It's so bad. Never pick this up. If you start with this as Paradox, drop it immediately. Don't even hesitate. Just drop it and leave it. This is the worst item. Easily. Oh my god. God damn, why does this exist? Oh my Jesus. Alright. Uh, pig ring? Uh, pig ring is fine. I mean, sometimes you can get some value out of it if you can buy the pig ring and then there's the vampire right there. Or like, you desperately need this to live. Like, two more seconds. But, yeah. Not that good. Usually not worth it. Leave it in C tier. Ring of the Resourceful Rat is S tier. This lets you s trade things of the same type and tier to the rat. So if you have like a really crappy A tier item or A tier gun, or you see a really crappy A tier gun or item from a chest, you can trade it and maybe get something really good. Same with S tier. Like the fact that there's, there's so many crappy A and S tier items and guns, the fact that you can turn them into something good with this thing is so good. You can And you can trade once per floor that you've been on. Which is great. This, this is definitely really good. Oh boy. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. Here's another good one. This is not good. Ring of Triggers is not a good item. Oh my god. This thing is not good. The only time this is good is if you have Glass Cannon, Yari Launcher, or Makeshift Cannon. Otherwise, this is useless, because you'll instantly hit the damage cap and do nothing. You'll be doing no damage, less damage than you would be just shooting the boss while it's like doing its thing. Though, like, you save some ammo, I guess. Even using this in like rooms with um, Eye Bomb Companion or this, or like any other low cooldown active item, is just usually not worth it. Like, sometimes the room clear can be good. And, uh, okay. I I understand why people like this item. It's really funny to see a lot of bullets, like, bouncing around all over the place, shooting like crazy. It's all this chaos. People like that. I understand that. It's funny. And I'll admit, it's, it's a cool item. It's very funny and entertaining to look at, but it's just not good. It's way too niche. The fact that it's only good with, like, Glass Cannon, basically, because when are you going to get Yari Launcher or Makeshift Cannon plus this thing? It's usually going to be Glass Cannon. The fact that it's only good when you have that is just so sad. But if you have Glass Cannon with Ring of Triggers, it's insane. You will just one-shot every boss you see, no matter how much damage you have. It's actually ridiculous. That's why it's going in C tier. And not like D tier or F tier, because glass can't exist. Alright, this is not a good item. Um. Rock powered bullets. I mean. Are these B tier or A tier? I'd say A tier. These are these are really nice. Um, it's never bad to have these. They increase your projectile speed and make you deal 10% more damage. I can't remember if they make you shoot faster or not. I don't think they do. Like, faster fire rate. I'm pretty sure they don't. And this is kind of nice because sometimes your projectiles are a bit slow on some guns. Or if you have, like, heavy bullets, then if you have heavy bullets plus rocket powered bullets, you're, I feel like your bullets are fast enough that it's worth keeping the heavy bullets. So that's a nice little synergy. Yeah, these are good. Really like rocket powered bullets. Roll bomb. Roll bomb is underrated, I feel like. So, the reason Roll Bomb is underrated is because people don't know about the explosion cooldown mechanic that I talked about with the bomb. This applies to the Roll Bomb, too. You can just roll away from any bullets that you need destroyed. As long as you're not doing it too often. Just every, like, few seconds. And then it'll destroy those bullets. Like, having Roll Bomb against Old King makes it so easy. As long as you're utilizing it properly. You just want to be careful. And the... You want to be careful you're not trying to use this too much, especially against bosses. But the damage radius on the bombs is actually really large. Like, you'll... The explosion from the roll bomb looks tiny, which can be kind of deceiving at a first glance. I feel like a lot of people write this thing off because they look at the explosion and it looks so tiny. But the radius is quite large, actually, if you actually go to use it against enemies. So this thing is pretty nice. It's, I would say it's definitely underrated. Rolling Eye, I don't know if Rolling Eye is underrated, but this is A tier, for sure. This is A tier for the same reason as the Rat Sack being up here. I didn't even talk about the Rat Sack's active slots, but, I mean, active slots, there's not much to talk about there. It's really good. But yeah, the Rolling Eye has that radius around your dodge rolls where you are safe. You're reflecting the bullets that you would otherwise be maybe rolling into. The radius isn't as large as the grab radius on the bag, but it's still an extra radius around your dodge roll of safety that makes it stronger and just better, which is really nice. I will say you sh probably shouldn't be using this thing to like purposefully dodge into bullets and try to be reflecting them back at the enemies because first off, that's not going to do that much damage. <laughs> and second off, you're probably going to get hit trying to do that. You should think of it as just making your dodge rolls stronger and safer, in my opinion. And yeah, this is a really strong item. Alright. Uh, this thing. 
is bad. <laughs> Ruby bracelet. Like, they buffed this thing to have that dodge roll mechanic, but it doesn't... Like, it's not worth it. What if you upgrade it? Yeah, we're, let's assume this is the upgraded... Uh, this is under the assumption that this is the upgraded Ruby bracelet where you have the dodge roll effect. I just feel like it's not worth it. Like, it's funny. It's funny to roll into, like, this giant gun nut and he just dies with only this. But the only time this is really worth it is if you have, like, the actual holy synergy of dodge roll damage ups. You have this. You have, uh... Armor of Thorns, and you have um, the Blast Helmet, and you're playing the Bullet. If you have all of those, then you would probably like one-shot bosses by rolling into them, <laughs> which would be really funny, I'll admit. But like other than that, like it, it just does nothing effectively. Oh, Scatter Shot! I'm putting Scatter Shot and Beats here, but this is actually not that good of an item. Because the problem with Scattershot is you're fragmenting your damage from doing one large instance to three smaller instances. It increases your overall DPS, but typically you don't want high overall DPS, you want high overall damage because of how the damage cap works. Because, like I said earlier, slower, bigger hits play around the damage cap better than smaller rapid hits, typically. Because the rapid hits are proccing the damage cap constantly, where the slow hits let it, like, kind of um, reset between shots or, like, between reloads or whatever. And that that's kind of why Scattershot struggles, because you're fragmenting your damage, which increasing your overall DPS is helpful if you're using like glass cannon, Yari launcher, makeshift cannon, of course. But other than that, it's usually a bad thing, especially because Scattershot has very bad accuracy. That's another sad part about the Scattershot is you need a lot of accuracy to even utilize this thing properly. Like if you're trying to, if you're playing robot, Scattershot's automatically quite a bit better than if you're playing like Hunter or whatever. Just because it's way harder to hit those shots, the accuracy, the spread is just too big. So I'm gonna put it in B tier, but I, I really don't think Scatter Shot is very good actually. Like I could even see justification for putting this in C tier, just because it's way too niche. But I'll leave it in B tier, just because it got quite a big buff. It increases your overall DPS by a good amount. It's just, it's very niche when this is actually good. Scope, though. Oh my god. Scope is amazing. This is so good. Because this is a D tier. Huge accuracy increase. Scope's accuracy increase is crazy. It's like battery bullets. It might even be better than battery bullets. I'm not even sure. This thing is nuts. Plus, it gives debatably the strongest synergy in the game. 360 yes scope with the op. If you've seen any speedrun with with any Enter the Gungeon Gunslinger stuff. They're spinning around, one-shotting all the bosses. That's because of this synergy with the AWP. So, this is just an insane item because it's D-tier insane accuracy increase, and it gives a really good synergy. Like, this item is so good. You, you should pretty much always buy this when you see it. Incredible item. I hate Scour. I hate Scour. I hate this item. I, I, I want to put it in F tier, but I'll put it in D tier. This thing is so badly implemented. <laughs> I'm not going to say bad. I'll say badly implemented. Because if you have any kind of, like, damage over time effect on your bullets, like, if you have hot lead or irradiated lead or your gun just lights stuff on fire or poison stuff, and you're doing that to a lot of enemies in the room, those damage numbers are going to be, like, popping up super fast, and it makes the game lag really badly. And these aren't even that good. It just makes it so you can see the damage numbers and the health of enemies, and it gives you 10% damage and one curse. So first off, you would never use this in a Hero Shrine run, because a curse for that is not worth it. 
And non-hero shrine, I guess it's fine, as long as you're not going to lag your game to shit. If, if you don't have any kind of damage over time like that, then I guess it's fine. It's just so poorly implemented and, like, doesn't do that much. I'm putting it in D tier. I hate this item. Um, all right. Compass. I mean, yeah. How much to say? Compass has kind of has the same synergy as a uh, uh, this eye bomb companion app, or I keep forgetting the name. Uh, Melted Rock. Yeah, kind of has the same synergies as those. It points you to where the boss like, the boss room is. Well, yeah. Not much to say about it. All right. Oh my god. All right. We've had some. Oh no. I'm gonna get so flamed for this. We've had some hot takes this stream. But this might be the hottest one. <laughs> Junkin sucks. He sucks. He's so bad. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. You should not be junking all your chests to make this piece of trash stronger. Stop doing that. Don't do that. The stuff in those chests is gonna be better than this piece of trash Once he has like five junk, you know how many chests you have to junk to get this guy to like max power You have to junk like ten chests, and that's if you're lucky Like he sucks so bad and he's just such a noob trap because the noobs think Oh, I have junkin I need junk to make this guy stronger, because if I make him really strong, then he'll kill the bosses for me. So let me junk these, like, ten chest. let me junk every single chest in this run. Oh wait, I died! Oh no, how did this happen? Like, he's not good. It's better to just use your keys properly, and then if you happen to get junk in when you're- when you have to junk a chest, just let him be. Open your chest like normal, like a normal person and just if you happen to get some junk just let it just let it happen don't junk all your chests to try to buff this piece of trash up it's not worth it i will say if you if people would figure out how to use this guy properly by not junking everything i would put him in c tier maybe even b tier because he's a fine familiar but because people think the way to use this guy is the junk every single chest you get until he's max power is just so idiotic that I'm putting it in D tier. Like, he's actively making you play like a fucking idiot, all right? Please, stop. Oh my god. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Getting a little heated. I had to let that one out. That that was building inside of me for many years. Uh -huh. All right. Anyway, uh, seven leaf clover. I mean, yeah, that's tier. It's kind of a boring item, but it's really funny to have like a real a lot of high tier items and guns. Yeah. You're probably going to get infinite keys if you have this too. Like, it's pretty likely. You'll get either Mimic Tooth or A key or Shelaton key or stuff like that. Pretty good. Shadow Bullets. I'll put them B tier. Well, I'll put them A tier just because, well... I'll put them A tier. I like them, but they do make you shoot more bullets, not even doing more damage. The fact that they work very effectively with... Um, every single gun you have in your room clear makes me like these. And if you're damage capping on bosses, it's not going to hurt you too much. It'll hurt you a little bit, but it's... I, I think it's worth having. Uh, Shadow Clone. I like Shadow Clone. I think it's B tier. This is one of the better active items for sure. This just makes... Especially early game when you're not hitting your damage cap usually. This just makes... This gets your damage up to par. 
And if you're on a really if you're on a really weak run in the late game, this just makes up for your bad damage on bosses because you can stack so many clones that all just do the same damage as you, as far as I know. Um yeah, the Shadow Clone is really great. The cooldown being low is kind of nice. Alright, Shellaton Key. This might be a slightly hot take, but Shellaton Key is only A tier. This is not a game winning item, in my opinion, because of the curse. If you're not playing Hero Shrine, this thing is probably S tier. Probably, but I don't know. The investment of, like, this thing is significantly worse than A key. Because it's, first off, it's not a gun. Like, A key is a good gun. It's an AK-47 that gives you infinite keys, and it doesn't give you curse. So, that's why I put A key in S tier, and I don't put this in S tier, because, first off, A key is just a useful gun. Where, if you're, if you're in the early game, and you have to invest three keys to the key merchant to buy either a key or shellaton key a key is infinitely more useful because you can use it in the meantime while you get like guns and items from your keys that you just invested um uh, it's just like immediate payout where shellaton key you Im immediately you get nothing you have to wait to get those chests to like build up that's a big reason why this is so much lower and yeah i only play hero shrine personally so Shellaton key is the kind of item that if I desperately need keys, or I see myself getting a lot of value from Shellaton key in the near future, I'll buy it or pick it up. I'll get the value and build up like five or so keys, and then I'll drop it so I can get rid of Lord of the Jammed. Just because this is risky to take in Hero Shrine runs, especially early on, because you're dealing with Lord of the Jammed without getting that immediate value that you need from taking a cursed item. Like, other cursed items that I usually take are, like, Curse Bullets or Big Boy. I always take Big Boy. I'll usually take Curse Bullets. These give you immediate value, immediate power that you can use to deal with Lord of the Jam more effectively because you can move through rooms quicker and all that. But this doesn't give you that. Um, that's why it's A tier and not S tier. I could definitely... S yeah. I could definitely see arguments for putting this in S tier, and if you would rate this in S tier, I definitely wouldn't argue with you, but... Personally, I just... The downsides considered with Shelton Key, I just... I don't think it's quite a complete game-winning item, but it's very good. Alright. Uh, Shield of the Maiden. I'll put Shield of the Maiden in C tier. I really like Shield of the Maiden, but it's hard to... Not even hard to use, it's just weird. Like, you hide under the shield for a few seconds, and then you're invincible, and you can pop out and start doing damage again. Like, a lot of people just, like, don't want to deal with that i feel like myself included like i know how to use this thing but typically i just feel like not using it honestly i'd rather just dodge or dodge roll than try to use shield of the maiden um shock rounds shock rounds are quite good actually shock rounds it's weird i feel like the electricity plays around damage cap like despite it i Despite it feeling like it's doing very rapid damage, it feels like it plays around damage cap fairly well. Especially with, like, Pistol Machine. This gives Pistol Machine, by the way, which doesn't really matter since you would be chaining the bullets together anyway. It just gives the bullets piercing against bosses and angry bullets against enemies. So it's still an upside with Pistol Machine, but, like, eh. But, yeah. For some reason, I feel like this and Pistol Machine... Despite doing very rapid damage, they play around damage cap really well. Like, weirdly well. I don't know. I can't put my finger on why, but... This is definitely a good one. Alright, more speed upgrades. We have the Shotgun Cola. Where did I put the other speed upgrades? Brother? I think I put them in A tier. Shotgun Cola and Shogun Coffee. Uh, yeah, I think they belong up here with Ballistic Boots. Uh, with the sweet, with whatever other speed ups I put up here, broccoli. Just, they're just speed. I think they're the same amount of speed as ballistic boots. I'm not sure about that. I haven't looked it up. I won't. I'll just assume I'm right. <laughs> These don't need to be accurate. Come on. But yeah, speed is just incredibly good in this game. Again, if you're playing turbo, these are slightly less influential because you already have 
higher speed compared to how the much the enemies and stuff were sped up. But it's still kind of nice. Silver bolts are S tier easily. If you're playing Hero Shrine runs, most of the time you're gonna break damage cap without glass cannon, makeshift cannon, or Yara launcher is with this. With the silver bullets. Silver bullets versus jammed bosses is just ridiculous because it's so many damage multipliers. Like even and even if you don't have curse. If you get silver bullets, first off, you can purposefully get curse to get value out of them because you get all the benefits of curse without having to deal with the stronger enemies because the stronger enemies just die so fast. And let's say you don't want to get curse at all. It's still a damage multiplier against bosses. It's a small one, granted, but for this being a C tier item, it's still worth it. This is cheap enough that it's always worth buying. The fact that this is C tier is ridiculously good. It's so inexpensive in the shop. Such a good item. Even if you're not playing Hero Shrine. Like, I almost wish this was what Platinum Bullets was. Just no fire rate, only damage. Just against everything. This would be, like, the best item in the game. But because it increases your fire rate along with it, it's just like, ugh. Just give it more damage instead of the fire rate, dude. For real. Alright. Singularity. I mean, Singularity, I... It might belong in A tier. I mean, if I'm putting lead skin in A tier, I should probably put Singularity in A tier. Singularity is pretty good. It just summons like a black hole that summons all, all, in all the bullets and enemies and stuff. I never use this thing, but it's pretty good. Uh, I think it has some good synergies too, but I can't remember what they are. Uh, oh. So, I think there have been some developments with this item. I'm not completely updated on this, and I can't even remember exactly how it used to work. Like, from my understanding of it. This item is... Okay, let me... This item is bugged. The coolness doesn't do what it should. I believe it still cools down your active items, but I don't know if it makes you get more room drops and stuff. I'm gonna put it in B tier. Because if you're okay with getting the curse... Which, uh, if you're playing Hero Shine, usually 6th Chamber isn't worth it. Or, 6th Chamber, yeah, that's what this is called, right? <laughs> um, usually it's not worth it. But, I mean, if you're playing non-Hero Shrine and you see it, it, it can be worth it. It's not bad. It's just, yeah, this item is very weird. Maybe look at the wiki and make your own opinion up on this, but, yeah, I think this is not a great item from my understanding of it. A uh, smoke bomb? Yeah, let's just go with the other stealing active items right here. This just lets you steal. This is just a better version of box because it's, uh... I believe this is C tier. So, you're not giving up as much trying to steal with this. Snowballets. I'll put snowballets in B tier. These are weird. These are kind of buggy. These are one of the buggy things that I mentioned with, like, cop and the phoenix up if you have snowballets for some reason it like gives them crazy damage multipliers so if you have a little bit more if you have this plus some other damage and randomly the fireball from this the phoenix will just be like massive and it'll just one shot the boss or the cop will just like randomly one shot the boss it's really weird this item is it's some bug with this item and familiars other than that I don't really know how impactful this is. I mean, it's just extra damage. It is A tier, which is kind of sad, but like, extra damage is usually worth it, so. Ooh. Uh, this guy. What's this guy called? Space Friend. Space Friend is nice. I like Space Friend. Just because he shoots relatively quick and he shoots very accurately. Like, I like when my familiars are actually landing their shots, which is one problem I have with Super Space Turtle. Super Space Turtle, it doesn't land its shots. It needs to be so close to something to be actually be hitting it. Uh, because the projectile speed is way too slow. This guy, he just... The shots are instant, so he just lands them. And this guy has nice synergies with some stuff. Like, uh, I believe has a synergy with Alien Engine that makes him shoot faster. Which is always nice. So yeah, this guy's just really nice for room clear. And he's not going to hurt your uh, boss clear. 
Spice is S tier, obviously. Spice might be the best item in the game. In my opinion. It's either Spice or Clone. I definitely like Spice better. Clone is probably technically better. But Spice is just like the bread and butter of how you break damage cap with any gun. Like, Silver Bullets can do it if you have high curse and some other damage ups. But Spice is just like any... Yeah, with Spice, any gun you have, it can break damage cap. I've literally one-shot the Lich multiple times with the Mega Dowser because of Spice. Like, this item is ridiculous. And the thing is, its downsides don't even matter as long as you're stacking armor. Because you could eat 100 spice, you can eat 200 spice, and never, like, have anything bad happen to you as long as you have a good amount of armor. And if you're a decent enough player, you'll be stacking, like, like I said, 10, 15, 20 armor per run, no matter what. So this is just always a, a big damage up. Which is really nice. So yeah. This is definitely more of a skill item, but I feel like it's so good. Oh, also, even if you... Okay, even if you don't want to lose all your health, okay? You should still eat the spice, in my opinion. You should eat the spice three times. It's still worth it. Eating the spice three times and then just not eating any more. You'll be losing items because the spice will be replacing the items. But the benefits from eating those three spice are huge. You like get movement speed, the bullets move slower, you get a bunch of damage, you get health overall. Like the third one, you lose a heart container, but you get so many benefits that it's worth it. Like it's still worth eating this, even if you're not confident with losing all your heart containers. So this is just such a good item. All right, sponge. I don't like sponge. I'll put it in B tier. It's definitely solid. I'm biased against this thing. I just find it kind of annoying to like, be sucking up stuff that I want. Like, if I'm trying to use, like, Mega Dowser as a robot, Sponge is kind of annoying to have. If I'm trying to defuse a chest and I mess up, the Sponge can be annoying. The Sponge is like a bad synergy with Tangler. I just don't like the Sponge, but overall it is good. Like, it's basically the hazmat suit, except annoying. <laughs> Spring Hill Boots. These are A tier. These You could even make an argument for these going in S tier. Giving yourself two dodge rolls is so ridiculous. Like, if you know how to use these, you'll never get hit. If you mess up a dodge roll, you can react and just dodge a different way. <laughs> or you can just dodge twice and, like, be invincible for so long. But th this item is insane. All in a D tier item. So these are super inexpensive to buy. So good. Sprun. I don't like Sprun. I'll put it in A tier. But I'm biased against this thing. It's so... In fact, nah. Well... Is it A tier or B tier? It's so niche. Like, the odds of you getting a trigger that you're actually going to be able to trigger consistently, or even trigger at all, is just kind of low. I'm going to put it in B tier. And then even if you do trigger it, I think there's a bug where you can, like, drop Sprun and keep the wind or wind gunner wind gunner forever something like that i've never done that personally i just find not being able to switch weapons really annoying because switching weapons is a very important ability you need to be able to switch to like freeze enemies if you need that or switch to defuse a chest if you have a ch if you're one of your guns is your chest diffuser or just switch to a different weapon for bosses and stuff i mean Granted, the gun Sprun gives you is very strong. Like, it makes it so you effectively don't need any room clear or boss clear that it's different than that. But still, I find it just kind of annoying. <laughs> On top of being kind of niche with the triggers. Not a fan. Style bullets. Hmm. I feel like... Style bullets are probably A tier. I don't... Yeah, they're pretty good. I don't love them as much as I used to, but it's just, it's a damage up that you're usually going to be getting. I, I'll be honest, I don't actually know if the damage is lower if the bullets shrink or not that versus normal. I don't know if that's a myth or what. I've never tested myself. Maybe the wiki says, but yeah. This is usually just like a damage upgrade. Nothing wrong with that. Stuff star, yeah. Enough said. Invincibility active, pretty good. 
sunglasses. These give coolness, and whenever there's an explosion, time slows down, which is incredibly annoying. Uh, these do... Sunglasses do give Nailed It. Which is really nice. Like, if I'm putting this up here for Nailed It, I should probably put sunglasses up here, too. Because these... I'm pretty sure these both give Nailed It, and this also gives coolness. The slowdown is really annoying, but the coolness is probably worth it, so... Oh. This is one of the most hated weapons in the game. Um... But I'm putting it B tier. Super Hot Watch. I, I, I'm with you. I hate Super Hot Watch. But it has potential if you're willing to put up with how much of a pain in the ass it is to use. Like, this thing is an absolute pain in the ass to use. But if you're willing to put up with it, you're probably not going to take damage. Just, I don't know. If you know how to play the game at all, this thing is just like going to annoy you so much. And you probably know how to play this game if you have Super Hot Watch unlocked, because to unlock Super Hot Watch, you have to get Lead God, which means getting five Master Rounds all in the same run. That doesn't mean no hitting all five bosses in the same run. You can, like, you can get Clone and, like, um, get the first Master Round twice, second Master Round twice, third Master Round once, and then that's it. Or you can get it from boss rush. You can just no-hit all the bosses in boss rush, which is much easier than in a normal run, because boss rush bosses don't have damage cap. So you can kind of cheese this unlock by using boss rush and stuff, but yeah. I'll put it in B tier because technically it has really good potential, but yeah, this this I hate this item. It's Yeah. <laughs> Super Space Turtle. This thing's kind of overrated. I'll put it in B tier because it's it's not consistent damage in rooms because the projectiles are too slow, but it's relatively consistent against bosses, which is nice. And I think people mostly like it because it's cute. But yeah, this thing being B tier, it's too expensive. You're usually not going to want to buy it. Um, it just doesn't do a lot for its price in the shop, honestly. But it's fine. Ooh. Supply drop. I'll put supply drop in C tier. I am sad about putting it in C tier because I really like supply drop. I'm a firm believer in supply drop. Like, especially in normal runs where you're getting less ammo compared to hero shrine runs. Having an emergency supply of ammo for your main gun whether it be like your main room clear or boss clear or whatever you need at the moment, having that is so valuable. It, like just having that kind of bridge the gap between ammo drops from the ground or from bosses, it's just huge. It's insanely impactful to the game. The problem is it's rarely worth, like the impact it has is great, but it's rarely, rarely worth keeping versus like, a lot of the time you're gonna get what like lead skin or stuff star or ethereal form or any kind of these a tier active items or even even the toke the whatever this is called i can't the uh, yeah i can't remember the name of this thing but even this i would get rid of supply drop for this i don't know like so and and at that point it ends up just being used to like top off a gun that has a little bit of ammo gone. But I feel like that's usually how it gets used. Which isn't necessarily incorrect. It's just kind of disappointing that such a good active item has to be switched out like that. And wasted. But, yeah. It's definitely useful. It's unfortunate. I kind of wish the Marine had... Or, the Marine, or... I, I don't know. Maybe giving every character a slot only for this is a bit much, but... I definitely wish the Marine had a slot specifically for the supply drop, so he didn't have to get rid of it for another active item. I feel like that would really make people realize how impactful this is to a run, if you decide to keep it. But, anyway, um, here's all the table tech. Okay, so table tech blank... It's probably A tier. This is a really good table tech. I mean, if you're just 
flipping, even if you have no synergy, no golden amulet, no anything. Even lodestone amulet is pretty good with this because it shortly stuns all the enemies, which is really nice. But yeah. Um, even if you don't have any of that, it's just really nice. I mean, you flip a table, everything gets knocked back, all the bullets are destroyed, and you blank the walls to check for secrets. Like, even if you don't need the blanks to stay alive, you're just checking every single wall at the same time in any room that has a table, which is really good. Um, table tech heat, pretty bad. Honestly, even meh. This thing just doesn't do enough. Like, it's kind of nice lighting stuff on fire, but it's almost not worth flipping tables specifically for it. Like, I would put it maybe in useful, but I don't know, it's just a little too weak. I'll put table tech money in useful. The problem with table tech money is if you see it in the shop, it has a set price for every floor. Like, this is what? I think this is a C or D tier item, but the price in shops is inflated tremendously. It's very inflated. To the point where it's almost not worth buying, especially if you're not playing Hero Shrine. If you're playing Hero Shrine, you can usually afford the investment, even though it's not going to pay you back for, like, several floors. But if you're playing a normal run and you see this on floor one, you probably can't afford it. It's such an investment that you just cannot make. It's too expensive. And its ability isn't that great, flipping every table in the room. It's really nice by itself, but usually if you're... If you have another table tech synergy, you normally don't want to be flipping every table in the room, besides with like table tech heat or maybe table tech shotgun. Those are like good. But table tech blank, you usually don't want it. Unless you have golden ammo, let then it'll just nuke the room. Table tech rage, you definitely don't. Table tech rocket. Uh, this is useless, by the way. You should never take this thing. <laughs> table tech rocket sucks. It's kind of okay if you have the portable table device wherever I put that, right here. Because you can use it against bosses, just like, to send rockets at them, but otherwise, the rockets can damage you, they're just kind of unreliable. It's not worth it. You should probably sell this thing as soon as you get it. Or just don't pick it up in the first place. Uh, Table Tech Rage, I do like. In fact, I'll put Table Tech Rage in B tier. I don't think it's quite good enough for A tier, but, like, if you have Table Tech Rage... It just makes room clear a lot easier. And if you have portable table device, it's just double damage against bosses, which can be useful if your DPS is low. Table tech shotgun. I used to like table tech shotgun. I I definitely don't like it as much anymore. I don't think it's that great. Even though the shotgun shots are homing, um, it just feels like a lot of the time they're not going to hit anything or... They're not going to do that much. It's definitely worth having. Like, if you pick it up, might as well keep it, but yeah. Uh, table tech sight. This makes you shoot triple and s slow down time when you flip up a table. This thing is technically good on paper, but uh, it's just so annoying to use. Uh, that I would, I would just never use this personally. Maybe if I had, like, uh, portable table device plus glass cannon. I would think about utilizing this, but ah, that's so niche. Uh, table tech stun. I'm gonna put this right next to table tech blank. It's a room wide stun that's of decent duration. Um, every time you flip a table, it's so good. This makes room clear so much safer. I really love table tech stun. All right, portable table device or not portable table device. Portable, portable. Teleporter Prototype. Um, this is, okay. Yeah, this is like the new speedrun item where speedrunners are trying to get this and they try to teleport to the next floor and stuff. Because apparently, for some reason, <laughs> this is crazy to me. Somehow they didn't know that Teleporter Prototype could teleport you to the next floor at all until like two years ago, I think? They figured it out? I don't know how they didn't know this, but... They figured it out, and uh, they started using this for speedruns, so... Yeah, I mean, normally this is such a terrible item. I would even put this in F tier. I mean, like, why would you ever use this? It's so bad. The fact that it has a chance to teleport to, to the next floor means if you're using this, you're risking missing a secret floor, because, like, every room is a, every floor has a secret floor at this point in the game. 
Uh, and even if you didn't miss the secret floor, missing the rest of your floor that you're on is just really sad. So yeah, definitely F tier. Uh, ticket. I'll put ticket in A tier. Just a nice active item. This is an active item that does a lot of damage, and you can hide the, behind the bird to, like, not take damage yourself. But yeah, this really shines if you have low DPS, but otherwise it's pretty useless. Lockpick. Oh my god. Okay. Let's talk about the pilot here with lockpick. Most people don't understand how to use the lockpick. They think the lockpick sucks because it's, oh, oh, the lockpick. It's a 50% chance to open this chest. And that's it. That's all they think about. But that's thinking about it the wrong way immediately. The way you need to be thinking about the lockpick is, okay, this is a 50% chance to open a chest that I would not have opened otherwise. That's the key part. 50% chance to open a chest that I would not have opened otherwise. If you, you have to put yourself in the mindset of, okay, if I did not have lockpick right now, would I use a key on this chest? If the answer is yes, don't lockpick the chest, just open it. You should see it as a 50% chance every single chest you would have junked, you lockpick it instead. If you would have junked the chest, lockpick it instead. That is, it's simple as that. And instantly the lockpick becomes like amazing. This is an A tier. This saves you so many like chests that you would have junked. And increases your overall power by the time you get to the late game by a lot. Especially if you're kind of bad at managing your key economy. <laughs> but you do have to manage this thing's cooldown. Like, know where the chests are so you can lockpick it before you, like, run out of rooms to cool it down. Because if you have two chests that are locked, or you have two or three, it would be three chests that are locked before the boss. It's already too late. You can only lockpick two of them because you would lockpick one before the boss. And then after the boss, you have cooldown and you lockpick the other one. If you, there's three or more chests, you need to be managing that cooldown. So, especially if you see a chest drop on the ground, you should think about when you're going to lockpick it before the boss so you can have cooldown. Alright, Turkey. Turkey is A tier. Turkey saves you so much ammo. This thing is so good. Every third shot you hit, you get an ammo. You get a round back, which is so good. This is like ammo synth. Except maybe better. <laughs> It's more expensive because it's a higher tier. I, I can't remember if this is C tier or D tier. So ammo synth is cheaper in the shop, which gives it a leg up. But yeah, this thing, I love turkey. It makes your ammo last so much longer. It gets you so far on like nothing. Turkey's great. Uh, turtle problem. Turtle problem is not good. I mean, I'll put it C tier, but they're cute, but they don't, they don't do anything. <laughs> They just die. They're not even good at blocking bullets, really. Like, they just die. As soon as you fight any boss, they're just dead. And I don't even think they persist between floors, do they? Maybe they do. I can't remember. I can't remember because they always die every boss fight. These guys just do nothing. I mean, they don't hurt you, but... It's not worth buying. Alright, Unity. Unity is A tier. So, Unity, I believe its damage, like, calculation is different from other damage ups, where Unity applies the damage increase to every single projectile that you're shooting. So, alright, I believe this is correct. You might want to check the wiki on me for, on, on this for me, but I believe it applies the damage upgrade to every projectile. So, like, Unity with a pistol versus Unity with, like, a shotgun... The shotgun is going to get way more damage from the unity. That's a big reason why it's up here. And it's also just a, de a decent DPS increase on top of that. So yeah, unity is great. This is usually worth buying if you see it in the shop. Always great to see from chests as well. All right, uranium amulet. Uh, we'll just put it straight with uh, copper amulet. I don't... I Yeah, copper amulet gives phoenix up, which is kind of nice for the glitchy synergy, but... Other than that, Phoenix up doesn't do a whole lot. Uranium Amulet, kind of the same boat as Copper Amulet. Just 
the effect doesn't do a whole lot. You mainly want it for the extra blank per floor if you have the money to buy the amulet. Not a lot to say about that one. Utility belt. I'll put utility belt in A tier. Um, this is like backpack and ammo belt combined. I think it gives slightly more ammo than ammo belt. But yeah, this thing is great. I th think it... I can't remember if it's C tier or B tier. I want to say B tier because I remember this... Well... No, is this C tier? I remember costing 54 on like floor one. Um, it's usually worth buying if you can afford it. I mean, active slot is always great. More ammo is always nice. But yeah, utility belt. Really great. Corporal bullets are D tier. These could even be F tier, but... Are these F tier? Yeah, these suck. These, like, don't do anything. Why are these in a red... These are A tier. These are in red chests. Why? These don't do anything. These don't even scale with coolness, as far as I'm aware. Like... This is not worth taking. It would make sense to put this in D tier, I guess, because I have this here. I'll put it in D tier, but yeah, this... It does, like, nothing. It's... It does nothing, man. Alright. Wax wings. Yeah. Wax wings are great. Just flight. Pretty much same as Cat Throne. Minus the bullets, but yeah, the bullets on Catherine don't even matter, so. Light is always great. Immunity to pits, fire, poison, electricity. All that nasty stuff. Alright, Weird Egg. Uh, I want to put Weird Egg S tier. I'll put it A tier. Weird Egg is incredible. Weird Egg... If you have not unlocked Weird Egg, you should attempt to do so immediately. I can't remember how you unlock this even. But yeah, this is a D tier active item. If you eat it, it fully heals you. So this is just like a complete safety net. If you want to hang on to the egg, you can eat it in case you get in danger, you get low on health. A D tier active that fully heals you. That's so ridiculously insane. Also, if you hang on to the egg and its animation in the corner starts changing, like it'll start bouncing around more and more and more. Um, the longer you hang on to it and the more it's bouncing around, you can drop it on the ground and shoot it. <clears throat> and the, the longer you have it, the more it's bouncing around, the higher tier of thing it'll give you when you shoot it. So if you don't need the health, it's just giving you like a high tier thing, which is great. Yeah, I, I could justify putting this in A tier. Mostly because of the full heal, but yeah. I'll just put it in... Or an S tier, I meant, but yeah. I'll just put it in A tier. It's pretty good. Um, I, uh, White Guan Stone? I don't remember what this thing is called. Uh, doesn't this give you an extra blank per floor? I mean, it's pretty good. I think this gives you an extra blank per floor. Man, I don't even... Is this White Guan Stone? I don't know why I can't remember anything about this item. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty much in the same boat as these amulets, just... You don't really care about the effect, you just want the blank per floor, so... Gets the job done. Uh... Wingman. I'll we'll put Wingman B tier. This is an A tier familiar. Uh... It's a pretty good familiar. It's pretty decent. The fact that it's A tier is kind of sad, but I feel like it's usually worth it. It has a good synergy. I believe it also has a synergy with Alien Engine. Same as Space Friend, but... Yeah, I can't remember. Wolf. B tier as well. Just a solid familiar. I like Wolf for room clear. Um, and I like that it damages enemies that are... Like, invisible but stationary. Like, those stupid genie guys that... Teleport around while they're teleporting, the wolf will still damage them. Or like Cannon Balrog, of course, is a well-known one. If Cannon Balrog is teleporting around, the wolf is hitting him. Um, yeah, it just does good, consistent damage against enemies that aren't moving. So like Rat Phase One is nice. Rat Phase Two, I don't even know if it damages Rat Phase Two actually. Yeah, not bad. Um, oh, Yellow Chamber. I feel like this is an overrated one. I feel like Yellow Chamber is overrated because. It's just two heart containers, which, like, that's fine, I guess. 15% fire rate, I believe. Um, which, fire rate, I mean, that low of fire rate isn't that consequential. But it's not 
helping you at all. It's not as good as 15% damage. And it'll charm an enemy in a room for the duration of the room, and if the enemy is still alive at the end of the room, it'll kill the enemy automatically. Which is kind of cool. Like, it's just a lot of things packed in one, and it gives two curse, by the way. And I, I can't remember if it's A or S tier. It gives Magnificence, that's the important part. I don't know, it's just like... The heart containers are okay, I guess. The charming, like, okay, who cares? The fire rate, really, who cares? Like, it just does so many things so badly that if I saw this from a chest, I usually wouldn't pick it up, even if I wasn't playing Hero Shrine. If you're playing Hero Shrine, this is never worth picking up, ever. Unless you desperately need the health for some reason. But yeah, I mean... I would only pick this up if I needed the health for whatever reason really badly. It's just like... I, I'll probably even put it in C tier. Now that I've talked about it, I mean... I don't think it's good enough to be up here. It just, it makes no sense to pick this up most of the time. It just does so many things so badly. Besides the health upgrades. All right, last item, zombie bullets. I'll put zombie bullets in B tier. I like zombie bullets. It refunds your ammo if you accidentally shot a wall. Um, which actually synergizes pretty well with like high fire rate sometimes the problem with high fire is usually you're gonna be killing you're gonna be killing an enemy and then you're gonna be shooting the enemy while it's dying and it wastes a couple more bullets you're usually not gonna be missing and hitting a wall even if you do miss the range will probably just make the bullet disappear before it hits a wall but i don't know maybe this belongs in c tier yeah i'll put it in c tier it, it's nice to have but it's not impactful or anything and that's it wow we're done that's my tier list. That took a while. That took longer than I thought, but yeah. There's my item tier list. The, not that many useless items in Enter the Gungeon. Compared to... Uh, there's quite a few more guns that are useless. Because, yeah, for an item to be useless, it needs to be actively hurting you, I feel like. Which all of these do in some way or another. They actively hurt you. Yeah. Not too shabby. Let's take one more look over this slowly. And then I can answer any questions the chat has if anyone is still here that wants any questions answered. <laughs> 